We've made a lot of progress in two weeks. You got plenty to build on to get ready to play Tennessee. We're just gonna take everything we got, men. Everything we got and then some. Let's don't let's don't leave any stone unturned. You make sure that you care, take care of yourself, your personal life, and be sure that you're ready to the best of your ability next Saturday. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye is brought to you by... Welcome to the Auburn Football Review after yesterday's resounding 45 to nothing victory over East Carolina. Coach Pat Dye, you will have difficulty criticizing your team after that one, I would suppose. Well, uh, Phil, I was pleased with the game yesterday, but I was more pleased with the preparation for the game. Uh, we had the open week, and he had worked extremely hard. We went back and kind of had spring practice and worked twice a day, a couple of days, and uh, I think made a lot of progress as far as our overall team is concerned, and particularly in the running game. And uh, we worked hard on the specialty teams and the kicking game, and uh, tried not to lose any ground with the passing game. And I think the big thing is the attitude the players had towards the, you know, the two weeks preparation going into East Carolina. And we backed off of the time we spent on the field last week a little bit, and I thought that uh, we were a little quicker yesterday than we were against. Uh, Chattanooga, I still don't think that we're fully recovered from two a day, three a days, and four days, or whatever practice. But uh, I, th I can see their legs coming back. When they started cutting hair Wednesday night, I thought they must be feeling a little better. <laughs> You'll see some of the uh, short haircuts here in a moment. Uh, remarkable balance of the pass and run: 244 yards rushing, 234 passing. Is that what well, that's what for? that's what we'd like to have. Uh, you know, we we. Obviously, probably we'll get into some games where we'll throw a little more than we will others and probably get into some games where we run a little more than we do others. But um, we'd like to be balanced because I think that uh, it certainly keeps the defense off balance if you can do both. And, of course, we've gotten a big play off the passing game. And uh, the great defensive teams around the country now, you're, not, you're, you're just not going to break the long runs like you, you used to. And uh, we may have a long run occasionally, but... Uh, I think the big plays have got to come off the passing game, and, and defensive teams are so good now, it's just hard to take the ball and drive it and keep it. And, um, so we like what we're doing. We just got to need to continue to, to get better and uh, work on, you know, there's a lot of little areas that we need to improve on, and uh, there's some areas defensively that we need to improve on. So we got a lot of work to do, and this is a young football team, Jim, and it should be one that, uh, uh, not Jim Phil. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it's early in the morning when we talk. Right, it is. It is early, and of course, I'm used to talking to Jim Fife too. Uh, but uh, there's a there's a young team. We've got a lot of areas that we can improve, and it should be a football team that's going to get better every week. Okay, let's go into the Auburn dressing room right after the game. What times today you threw the ball away to avoid the bad play, like on the quick, quick screen over there? I was, I was happy with that. That's, that's what I've been needing to do. My percentage wasn't as, uh, as good as I wanted it to be and as good as first goal and the rest of us wanted it to be. But, but when it comes to no situation, the best thing to do is throw the ball away and regroup and run another play. And first of all, glory and credit goes to Lord Jesus Christ. You know, without him, none of this would be possible. You know, oh, oh, uh, to those other 10 guys, too, because uh, we've worked extremely hard on punt returns. And, uh, you know, without them, it would have been impossible. And, uh, you know, I'd like to single out each and every one of them because uh, they did a heck of a job. Remember the first punt return you ever made for a touchdown? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was yeah, one I'll never forget, you know. And uh, we got those guys coming in next week, and maybe we can duplicate it again. Any problems with the hands? No, not at all. You know, I, I hit it a couple times and it, you know, it stung a little bit, but it, it felt like it held up pretty good. You've got some uh, strong ties to Tennessee. Huh? Yeah, I've got a few connections up there. I've got a lot of, a lot of relatives will be coming down to this game, and it's, it's a big one for me. Well, I'm anxious to get back at them because, you know, they, they embarrassed us last year. I'm anxious to see how good this team is. You know, we 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 haven't played a team of caliber of Tennessee yet. And hopefully we'll do well against them. This is going next week is going to be a big week. I mean, it's I mean everybody's saying, well, you y'all haven't played anybody. You haven't played anybody. And next week is going to be the truth. And we all want, I'm ready for. 
I think everybody's ready for them. I believe it's going to take a lot of work this week because, uh, you know, even though they're beaten by Mississippi State, they're going to come in wanting this game more than any of them, you know, to stay in the SEC race. This so is their season in a sense, isn't it? It sure is. This and Alabama, they like. I've heard somebody say that their Coach Donahue only thinks about two games a year in there both in the state of Alabama. We're going to have to play real consistent on defense. And uh, if we play some of the way we play today, I think we can pull it off. We pick it up on Auburn's first possession, and you come out throwing the football, Coach. Well, it was, uh, it was again, you know, we just got different ways we want to start it, and we felt like that we could get a completion here and get the ball upfield a little ways, and, and of course we did. And this is a good drive. We take it right down the field and score a nice run right there by Tim Jesse and uh, 12, 14 yards. And, and I, haven't, I haven't talked to the coaches about the offensive line, but uh, Jeff had good protection all day, and he was a big play and pass to Lawyer Tillman gets it down around the 15-yard line. Fullwood comes back and runs a counter play and picks up six or seven yards, and Tommy Agee is going to make a nice run to get it down to around the two and, and uh, then Reggie Ware takes it over from there. Uh, we're seven and nothing first drive and a uh, little pass and a little run and uh, come right back on, on defense and Ken Morris makes a great play and intercepts a pass and sets up another touchdown. I really think our defensive staff, Coach uh, Hall and Coach Dennis, the coaches of secondary, Joe Witt, defensive ends, and uh, Reggie Heron did an excellent job with the game because East Carolina, we never played against a, a team that uh, you know, ran the running shoot. And there's Reggie Ware making some tough yardage inside. And you're going to see a great block right here by Brent Poolwood. Oh. That's uh, Brent had... had uh, like 22 he, right here. Kick him out. The, uh, the block there and one other one on an on a option play. I know that were outstanding blocks. And... I really think Brent Fullwood is closer to being a great football player right now than he's ever been. He's, he, uh, he doesn't have the big statistics as far as running the football, but... Um, and probably he, won't this year. Well, he's, the he's, uh, there's going to be games when he's going to have them, but, uh, you know, in games like the last two we've had, we're going to play all the running backs and uh, try to be the best we can, can be with all of them. There's two fine licks by Arthur Johnson and Tommy Powell and come back and that's uh, I guess Tracy Rocker and, and uh, Kurt Crane and our defensive front I, I, I just looking at the, at the tape last night and to, this morning it looks like our defensive front all of them played well I uh, look like we got more pressure here's a play that we had on earlier with Jeff uh, we had the quick screen called and, and it was covered and Jeff went back a Threw the ball away and comes right back and makes first down and that's going to be a really big play. drive alive. Nice play right there. Great play right there by Stacy Pearls. Block that guy. And, uh, I think we're getting a little better on this play right here. And uh, comes the big play. This is a duplication of the one we had against Chattanooga. I think that uh, and I'm really pleased with our operation for the calling plays, Larry Blakeman, Neil Calloway, and Richard Wood in the press box calling the plays down to Coach Sullivan on the sideline. They won't be yawning next week, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> they may not have a seat next week, I don't know. It's a fine play by Smokey Hodge right there on the kickoff. Our kickoff coverage was not quite as good as yesterday as we need for it to be. We got another turnover and, and had it nullified with a penalty, but as Brian Smith and Ron Stallworth and the front made a lot of tackles. Edward Phillips. <coughs> it's, uh, again, Ron Stallworth and, and Brian Smith and as Richard Manry and Trent Ulrich, two of our guys with new half sets, missed tackles there and finally pulled down by Andre Bruce. Andre had a lot of plays yesterday and had some big plays in the game. He chased that play, didn't he, from the yeah, offense? Yeah, he made two or three plays coming from behind yesterday, and you can do that when you got the kind of speed Andre's got. Nice play by, by Kevin Porter. And again, they, they got them all covered and the pressure, and there's Robert Goff. And uh, 
Nate Hill. Uh, the passing game is such that if the quarterback sets up close to the line of scrimmage, that's a good offensive line. Sir Jack coming off a of football. Uh, has Brad Johnson making an excellent block right there at guard. And has the play right there with Brent cut down the, the safety uh, linebacker or whoever it was coming up to take a pitch. Here's a nice throw and catch right here by Jeff Berger and, and to Trey Gaines for the touchdown. And uh, Jeff had a little pressure on him and he got the ball away. You can see him right there. The guy's reaching for him and he still gets it away. And uh, just a well-executed play in the throw and catch and run for the touchdown. Uh, I think that... Uh, Trey had some all-purpose yards yesterday. Well, you know, I, I looked at Trey yesterday running the punt back for the touchdown, and that's when he was a junior in high school, and I saw him looking at another player, and I said, you know, there's a great player right there by Andre Bruce, and they uh, running hard, and I think it was a short yard situation and forced him into a punting situation. Watch this uh, little move. This is uh, Alexander Wright that uh, we moved from defensive back to wide out, and uh, Alexander, I think, is going to uh, give us some exciting plays during the course of the year. He's still young and still learning. And Vincent Harris, tough running inside. And uh, we still, you know, we played an awful lot of young players in the game, and we get out and don't get it in, and uh, Chris Knapp comes in and kicks the field goal and it's 31 nothing in his head. He missed that 50 yarder, but boy, was and that it a guy good right kick. there was getting him a little dinner, I guess. <laughs> He's not interested in that camera. <laughs> He's having the halftime break, as we will have. Be back in just a minute. In veterinary clinic, my daughter is a graduate. <laughs> Practicing, by the way, now. Coach. Well, that's, that's great. Um, I believe in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, just outside Knoxville in Maryville. Knoxville, <laughs> Tennessee. Right. Why would you bring that up? Well, you think you can get us a scout in the <laughs> We'll try. <laughs> uh, you can see the progress on the stadium from week to week. Uh, it's going to be well, a magnificent this is, place. This is a shot of the man, uh, Phil, and I. And we were thrilled to death to get them back. And, uh, and we've got the best band in the country. What a fine group. They must practice late, too, Coach. They worked on I, I We heard them working all the last couple of weeks. Great to have them back, I know, and all those uh, kids who will be on campus this week. Well, uh, I think that a lot of them came back last week for the Tennessee and for Rock or Rush or whatever they go through this time of year, and the rest of them be coming in this week, and I guess uh, Tennessee marks the start of school because a lot of people think it starts the start football season. <laughs> That's fine hitting right here on the part of the defense. There's Robert Goff and, and um, Edward Phillips and Rodney Garner. And <clears throat> for the most part, we, I thought we played well defensively yesterday. They got a couple of big plays on the option game. And that was Reggie Hearing, a new <clears throat> member of the staff. Reggie calls the defenses, uh, fronts, and Steve Dennis calls the secondary coaches. And there's Jeff throwing to Trey Gaines. And uh, I think we take this one in. Yes. There's a handoff to two or three yards to Vincent Harris. Sweep to Fullwood. Good block right there by Vincent Harris. And good wall off the whole, whole side of the East Carolina line and take it down to the 12-yard line. Brent comes back again with the sweep and gets it down to, I guess, close to the five. From there, we... Give it to Tim Jesse, and he gets it down to the one, and I believe Vincent Harris takes it over from there. Vincent Harris, a member of the Auburn backfield. Red shirt, red shirt freshman, and uh, Vincent, I think, is getting better each week. He's still got a ways to go, and uh, but he's young, and that's what practice and playing is for, to get better. As Vincent right there, good shot at him. <clears throat> There's a fine play by Andre Bruce, and uh, I don't know how many big plays Andre had yesterday, but he had a lot of them, and I think Andre is getting better and better each week and had good pressure there, and Nate, Nate Hill makes a sack. Uh, I know Nate Hill played his best game yesterday. There's Ron Stallworth and Nate again. Rodney Garner, 
three down people on defense, and I think uh, Andre, uh, one of the defensive ends, played the screen perfect in order to sack the quarterback. Here's a punt return right here. Now there's Tommy Powell and Jan Morris and Smokey Hodge and Andy Underwood and Andy Irving and all getting screening and getting blocks, and Brian Smith throws the last block that, that uh, gets him in the end zone. Well, like I said, we worked extremely hard on this phase of the game during the during the week and during the open date. And, uh, Craig Gannis is an excellent return guy, and we, it just uh, gives us an opportunity to get a big play every time somebody kicks us the football. Well, he's been a solid player for four years. Uh, he's been he's been he's he's been a great player, but he's an even better person, and that's what's so important. There's, uh, Big play right there by John Dobbs. <coughs> Smokey Hodge recovers a fumble, and uh, we get a penalty and have that call back, or we'd have the ball right there in good field position. We've had three penalties on kicking games, on kicking situations, that uh, are really critical. There's Kurt Crane making a nice play, and there's Kurt and Chan Morris on the sideline. Our team, I think, is... is and come closer together. There's a fine play right here by Andre Bruce. He's fourth down and one. And he just drives the tight end back in the backfield and comes off and makes a play. And there's Chip Powell and uh, I guess Arthur Johnson. And Collis played a lot better yesterday. And That's starting and then, to look like Collis. Right, he's, uh, he's coming around. It's going to take some time for him to get back in the groove. He's in his Regis Lack at quarterback now throwing to Scott Bolton picks up 15 yards. We take this one down and nice run blocked by Collis and left side of the offensive line. The only turnover of the day coming in. Had a pretty good hole and just didn't quite have a good enough handle on the ball and the guy races in and slaps it out and we fumble the ball at the, I guess, 10, 11 yard line going in. and. I don't like to see the fumbles. I didn't necessarily need to think we need to score any more points. We had we had enough. That's a fine play by Arthur Johnson. I wish Arthur could have caught that one. I know that he had some big hits in the ball game yesterday. Fine play by Ron Stallworth. Nate Hills there. Is there next series? Right, here's a Scott Austin. Scott, hmm. you almost had that fumble there, buddy. <laughs> Just a little more. As here comes Scott the Austin and John Dooley and Malcolm McCreary all in the ball game. Now this is an 81-yard punt return by uh, James Joseph. Chip Powell had a good block right, to set him to up him, to get him started, and that one was called back also. That would have put it over 50, but uh, I think it, uh, Quentin Riggins had a good block. The last guy that made the block at the end of the run, but. Uh, just a, a few things here or there uh, feel just like that punt return. We had a kid who made a great effort to go down and help get the wall set and started, and then he got up off the ground and and uh, and blocked about 10 yards behind the runner on a punt, which is you know which is a, a critical error. Uh, you, uh, uh, you first of all you don't block behind the runner, and the second thing is you. Sure don't clip anybody behind the runner and it uh, of course the penalty called it back and it um, but it was pretty it was a great thrill of crowd young young guy with a great <coughs> run we'll be back in just a minute to talk about tennessee I get the feeling the crowds have been a little bit subdued this last couple of weeks but that will end next saturday tennessee comes to town well it's uh, of course it's always a classic college football game and uh, tennessee was one of the favorite teams in the conference to win the conference championship and everybody said that all they had to do was beat Auburn and Alabama to win it and of course Mississippi State has already proved that to be an untrue statement but uh, you can bet that Tennessee has been pointing to Auburn for a long time and uh, they've had an extra week to prepare for Auburn and uh, I, I know that they'll have the some of the guys that did not play against Mississippi State, Big uh, Cooper, one of our defensive tackles, and Davis, their running back at, uh, that didn't play against Mississippi State, will be ready for us. And um, They've got a great football team, and, and uh, 
But we'll have to be better than we've been to, to win the football game. We get to game. see what kind but of I team got, right? I, well, right, but I expect us to be better. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited about playing Tennessee. And, uh, you know, if you're going to win a championship, you're going to have to play the teams along the way, and it's time for us to play one of these. And so it will be a big day. Uh, this Saturday, big crowd at Jordan Hare and a lot of excitement. Let us remind you as we leave that uh, you can get your tickets for the closed circuit telecast of the Auburn Florida game, which will be at Memorial Coliseum. Get your tickets at the Auburn ticket office for that coming up on November 1st. And we'll see you next week with Auburn, Tennessee. Thank you. I didn't, I've been, I felt so good about you, I just, I didn't, and, uh, I mean, I mean, it, that's the reason, I mean, you know, when I, when I work you like I do, it's to find out about you, but what I found out about you, I like, and we may not win them all, but we're going to win all of them we're supposed to win, and probably some of them we ain't supposed to win, as long as we can keep on sticking together and pulling together and believing in each other and caring about each other. We don't have too many of them distractions. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review on a hot and exciting Saturday at Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn 34, Tennessee 8. Coach, on the list of satisfying victories, that one has to go up there pretty high. Well, it does, uh, Phil, and, you know, I'm, uh, a game like that, you, you, um, you got, I'm, I'm happy for our players and their families because the players are the one that pay the price to, to experience a, a win like that. Uh, certainly our coaching staff has, has done, has worked with the kids and paid the price too, and their wives and families and my wife and family, um, I got to be happy for our fans that have been so loyal to us and, and uh, certainly the faculty and Dr. Martin and the administration for the support that they've given us and uh, I think that it was a, a happy day for Auburn and Auburn people and uh, that's the most satisfying thing to me. I, if you were at Auburn yesterday and, and uh, even the Tennessee fans and the people that came down and uh, you know they've got, they've got great fans at Tennessee and uh, of course, it was hot, but uh, you walk and look around the campus and see the the families and the kids, and, and uh, uh, it was just a, a great day for American people. Yeah, right. Uh, and of course, it was a it was a day for Auburn. Last year it was Tennessee's year. This year it was our year, and um, it was a it was a big win for us. And I think that uh, uh, knowing this football team and and uh, what they've experienced since January, um, it, was a, it was very satisfying. I'll concur in that. And let's go into the dressing room and talk to some of those guys who made it happen yesterday. Hey, this is the game inches, isn't it? I'm telling you. Remember uh, that out you threw? Right. And I kind of, I checked off on that play, and uh, they rolled up in, uh, in the wrong coverage. The lawyer did a good job, and it was close. Then three plays later, you're in the end zone. Yeah, that's right. You know, I kept thinking, these type of games is the type of game that you have to be patient, wait for the good things, bad things happen, forget them, and go on. And that's, the, you know, thing Coach Sullivan's been telling me. And, you know, I, that's, all I could, that's all I could think about today, be patient. You know, I didn't throw for 200 yards, and I don't care about that. I'm just glad we had a 
good win and and no turnovers. And no turnovers. That's the that's the main thing because in, in other ball games that's something that's gotten us in trouble. We're all happy. When I went into the game, I wanted to do everything I could for the team and try to come closer and closer to the team because I was not there when they went through their four days and everything, so I couldn't really say I knew how they feel. But I just want to really get real close to my teammates now. Tell me how this compares to last year. Hey, man, there's no comparison to, like, it feels a whole lot better. I feel a whole lot better. Their offensive line was huge, and, you know, when you got a back that probably could play offensive guard for them, uh, you know, it makes it double tough. But I'm just happy with the win. And, you know, we're going to get better this week, and, uh, you know, we're going to come out and play Western Carolina just as hard. Coach is going to have a hard time finding fault with you guys this week, aren't you? Well, they'll pick out a few think, things. They'll find, they'll find something. I know that's right. They will find something. Is that a prospect there on your head? Yeah, this is the ball. He's the one that runs it all. <laughs> he must have been calling the plays today. He did. He was up there. He gave me all the tips. He told me what to do. Uh, this is quite a day, Coach. It was a wonderful experience. I, you know, the only thing I was disappointed in, like everybody else, was that one little letdown we had there. But we've had those in the last two games. We got to get rid of that. Coach, if I didn't get in free, I would pay to to go to Jordan Hare because there's a lot of fun there. That well, you just look stuff. at the look at the kids and the students and the fans of, from all walks of life, and it's just. Uh, uh, like I said, it's a great experience. Here we start the first play of the game with a, with a slip screen and uh, do a great job with execution and pick up uh, 17, 18 yards. That's the way to get started, isn't it? Right. Uh, Tim Jesse comes back with a sweep and, and makes another seven, eight yards, and we come out in our uh, wishbone and pick up the first down and get a holding penalty and stop the drive and just... Uh, but again, we kind of established the fact that we were going to move the football a little bit. They've got great speed at the skill positions. And uh, for the most part, I think our kick cover yesterday was pretty good. We had one, one left where they made the long return. And, and uh, you know, we just can't have that kind of breakdown in the kicking game. Here's Tommy A.G. on a, a little give inside. And big hole. I really think that just looking at the film, and I, I haven't talked to Coach Callaway and Coach Daniels, our offensive line coaches, but I think that our offensive line probably played as well as we played in a long time. And of course, uh, we had great running from our backs and not turning the ball over. Uh, it was a big, big uh, factor in the ball game, and our defense forced a couple of turnovers there and uh, stopped a touchdown and set up a touchdown. Well, uh, we're also key plays in the game. Chris Knapp uh, had two field goals. Chris Knapp is the guy that here. the guy that I told couldn't punt, uh, couldn't kick, and of course he certainly proved me wrong. And I know he's excited about it, but I'm more excited about it than <laughs> he is. Great play right here by Ron Stallworth. Forces a fumble, and and uh, I think it was about a 30-yard loss or something there. Uh, but to put them in a big hole, they come back and quick kick. And I don't know how far this kick went, but they didn't get the kind of roll on it they wanted. And the general would have liked that one. Wouldn't well, you? I don't know about the general liking it, but uh, you know that thing doesn't work as good on grass as it does <laughs> on, on that astroturf that they play on up in uh, Knoxville. This is the big return by Tennessee here, and of course that's uh, I, I don't know Woods or Woods, I guess. And the uh, Tommy Powell makes a great, great play right here. This guy had him one on one in the whole field to work with, and Tommy just centered him up and made the big play and I think they run one play here and, and Andre Bruce gets in and strips the ball and then gets back on the ball. What a uh, play. Still Andre Bruce is playing great football for mm -hmm. and, and we got a lot of folks in that defensive front there that are playing great football and I think yesterday I, I believe our secondary played as well as we played in the secondary at all in a long time. Mm -hmm. Nice run by, by Brent getting outside. We can't move it. They stop us. We punt back to him. You're going to see a great hit on a, on a punt right here by Alvin Mitchell. Right there. Woo. And uh, it was a little high, but he didn't get the face mask. But it was, a, it was a great leg, great effort. And he, Alvin made a couple of big plays in the game yesterday. And he's one of our walk-ons. This is an outstanding catch by Clink Stills, their, their fine wide receiver. Uh, Chip Powell had perfect coverage on him, and, and it was a perfectly thrown pass, and the guy just did a great job. Gary Kelly, fine hit by Arthur Johnson. Well, that's like Russell and the Bull. That guy I is think big, it, I think that Arthur and, and Chan Morris right now both are giving us excellent play at strong safety, and uh, Edward Phillips and Gary Phillips, uh, Gary Kelly and uh, Benji Rowland. And, uh, 
I, I think that we're going to find him. Of course, Rivera's missed two field goals yesterday, and that's one of them. And um, I think that we have, we're going to have a lot of people that played well uh, defensively. I just, uh, a lot of big plays. There's a sack by Tracy Rocker. We got good pressure on the quarterbacks yesterday, and I can't say enough about our defensive staff and the job that they did in preparation for the for the game. There's another fine play by Arthur Johnson, and Wayne Hall, and Steve Dennis, coaches of secondary, and Reggie Heron, and Joe Whit. I really felt like going into the game, we had the best game plan defensively that we've had. Mm. Tim Jesse running tough inside. And How's his ankle, sir? I'm not sure. Uh, we got a few folks bunged up yesterday. As a matter of fact, at the end of the game, we really, all the tailbacks, was, well, Collis was hurt a little bit. This is a touchdown drive right here. Fine play and throw and catch to Walter Reeves. Jeff comes back, and Scott Bolton runs a great route, catches the ball on the, we call a little corner route, and takes it out of bounds at the five. We come back in the wishbone, run the option, pitch it to Brent. Good play by the quarterback. Get rid of that. Speed. Ball. We get that block right there, Brent's going to walk in for the touchdown. Probably haven't worked enough on the option out of that set, and that's something we probably need to do this week in practice as uh, Reggie Ware going over and uh, Ben Tamarella and Vincent Jones and, and Brad Johnson in the middle of the line now with Jim Thompson and Stacy Searles. And I, uh, I think great oh. lick right there by... Tommy Powell, uh, Kurt Crane had a hold of him, and Tommy came up and finished him off. And it was so this is a that was a third and inches play right here, and they decided to try to go for the touchdown. And Tommy Powell and Kevin Porter had great coverage on Miller, that guy. And you talking about a football play? Now that's one right there. Chan Morris came in and stopped him for a five-yard loss on fourth and inches. And what a big play that was! It was gave us field position and momentum in the game and fine play right here by Gary Kelly. You get an outstanding defensive end play right now from Gary, Gary Kelly and of course Andre Bruce and Brian Smith had some big plays in the ball game. Here's a sweep. Phil, we're getting great camel work. Is that Vic on the sideline getting yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> of course, that guy right there is a running machine. He is certainly. I is told that. I told Brent after the long run later that you'll see in the in the uh, show if he'd have had to miss practice Monday and Tuesday, he probably got probably wouldn't have caught it. <laughs> okay. But uh, we'll be back in uh, just a minute. No more of those scrub board roads like you used to ride on going to school. Well, maybe they'll sample some of them on the streets in Auburn. <laughs> oh, you know a few potholes. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Okay, let's move back to the second half of play and uh, get back to a big third quarter. Uh, Auburn has not had good third quarters uh, this year, Coach. Well, we, I, I told the squad at the half that the third quarter was very critical, and uh, the, our defense just came out and, and really Gary Kelly. dominated this portion of the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that Wayne Hall did a good job of, of calling the defenses at this point and coming with a little pressure and... and uh, and of course, we did all day long keeping that quarterback off balance as to what we were actually in coverage-wise and front-wise. And uh, there's a few running things up in there, but most of the time they got closed pretty good. And here's a big play by Tracy Rocker and his buddy Ron Stallworth gets on it for Ron Stallworth is always big. around loose balls. <coughs> Well, Ron has, has really matured, and of course, he's always been such a fine person, and he's really matured into a fine football player. Good block right here by Jim Thompson. Just caved the whole side of the line in. And, of course, a great run by Brent Fullwood. And what a day. What a day. 208 yards on 18 carries. Well, you know, the, the great backs have the great days against the toughest competition. Did you see and, that? <laughs> uh, I just, uh, I'm mighty happy for Brent and, of course, the, his teammates over there on offense. And... Uh, Brent has matured a great deal as a person, and uh, he is right on schedule. And of course, he did miss a couple of days of practice last week, and which concerned me. But he pulled a growing Monday, and uh, but I think now he is. Those guys had him a day, didn't they? Well, that's a, that's some men right there now. You look at them, and they 
outstanding people and they're getting better and you know, this football team this is a great run right here and we're gonna get another shot of it and I just I'm <laughs> good enough to get tickled it uh, and smile about Brad Johnson I think Brad was in there every time we scored yesterday the freshman guard <coughs> Yeah, and Cowett sprained his ankle a little bit. Of course, nobody wanted to. There's Brad, number 52, coming off the ball right there and blocking that linebacker Ooh, and taking him Tommy outside. AG. And Tommy A.G. got the other linebacker, and and that's like you draw it up on the drawing board. And uh, Coach Blakeney and Coach Calloway and Coach Wood, uh, I thought, did a great job of calling the plays in the press box. And, of course, Coach Sullivan and uh, Daniels and Casey on the sidelines. Uh, you know, the game was... Uh, it was not easy from an offensive standpoint because Tennessee gives you so many different looks and so many different. Here's a great catch by Trey Gaynor. Watch Goodness, this again. Watch him get it, lose it, and get it back. He just, you know, he is such a great competitor and Oop. right there and comes up with it. And I don't know if that was a big play too. That was third and <coughs> at the goal line. Reggie Ware takes it in play. for the touchdown and makes it 24 to nothing. And of course, we're feeling pretty good at this point. Uh, but you, you take in consideration, you know Tennessee has got that great, great speed, and you can see it right here as a clip that wasn't called. And Brian Smith makes a play on the, on the was what was actually a quick screen and then turned into a reverse. This is a freshman running back they had. <coughs> and that was effort on the part of Shan Morris because Shan Morris can't run as fast as that guy, but he ran him down. <laughs> and... Uh, Oh, what a what a <laughs> lick by Edward Phillips. You know, there's, a, there's when the, when one of those backs runs up in there hard, and you see him coming back out the way they went in. You can you can just about bet that Edward's in the middle of them. And, and that guy weighs as much as Edward too. Good play right there by Andre Bruce, and another great play by Andre. He forces the pitch on the quarterback and breaks on the breaks on the pitch and knocks him out of bounds, and it puts him in a fourth down situation, and they come up and miss another field goal, and we still got. A shutout going, but it doesn't last. <laughs> I think Brent's tired now. That's the staple that's over a, there. Coach. That's right. Reggie Ware and Tommy Ag and Tim Jesse and Collis Campbell. Here's a big play by uh, Alvin Mitchell. Had lots of big, lots of big plays yeah. yesterday, rushing the passer and screen right here. Andre Bruce comes up and makes another fine hit on the on the boundary. Uh, Collis Campbell hurt his hand or uh, something yesterday and and, uh, and wasn't able to play and of course Brent after the runs and so forth he made he got tired and so we ended up playing there's a fine play by Tracy Rocker this is their second series of the fourth quarter <coughs> I hope this cough's not coming back Phil well, it seems uh, to return with the big games, Coach. Well, I guess that's right. <laughs> I think you'll see that Tracy Rocker played yes, better yesterday than he has all year. And, of course, we have a couple of missed tackles right here. And Tommy Powell really gets in the middle of it. But, Tommy, you got to wrap up. And that guy holds him up, actually, and right there. And keeps falling. him from falling. And, goodness, that guy can fly. That's Miller, a kid they signed out of Virginia College in California. And, and, uh, and I'm thinking, really I, said, I hope they don't get it to that guy much more. Big play here. That kicker actually hit the ball before it went 10 yards. And, and uh, I think of, uh, from where uh, James, the Joseph, James Joseph came out of the pilot with it anyway, but they hit it before it went 10 yards. And there's another fine run. The offensive line again opened up big holes in there behind Stacy Searles. And Third and three here. Brad Johnson and Yen Cowett. Yen was one of our captains yesterday. And, He's, uh, I'm telling you, the you know, only field goal Chris has missed is one he bounced off the upright from 50, 50 yards. yards. Yeah. Well, you know, he seems to rise to the occasion. There's James Joseph, and good block out there by Vincent Harris. And just got so many people contributing on this football team. We, I think we're playing about 10 walk-ons. There's a reverse. Fine block right there by Jeff Berger. get it take it down and we have something happen here that I certainly didn't want to happen but Jeff is actually down in the ball and 
<laughs> ends up now he really they gave him a touchdown but his knee hit the ground before he scored but i think that was just a kind of a He's, he's explaining it now. Well, he, I think Stacy wanted him to score. Stacy said, go on in the end zone. You see him, you can see him point well, to the, the end zone. that's the football instinct in the coach. To well, score. I think that, you know, uh, the players from few wanted to score, but I didn't care about scoring one at that you point in time. Talk to Johnny Majors on the field. I told, I told Johnny, I said, Johnny, I didn't have any, we didn't have any intention to doing that. And he said, why, that don't make any difference when it's like that. So, I mean, Johnny's. He understands Easy. kids and he understands, you know, football and mm -hmm. so, I mean, it happened. I'm sorry it happened, but <laughs> we can't undo it now. That's we right. got to live can't, with it. Can't, can't give it back. We'll be back in just one minute. Pat Dye, the improvement of this Auburn team is very evident. Uh, this team has got a chance to uh, do something this year. Well, I think that, um, I think they've gotten better each week. Uh, the important thing right now is for our fans and our students and the people that are talking to the players every day is is to not tell them how good they are and just tell them say you know y'all got a chance to be a great football team maybe before the year is over if you keep getting better each week and that's what the best category i put us in right now tennessee came into the game crippled up yesterday and was handicapped some um, I think that uh, there's several factors in the game that made it turn out the way it was. It was, it was extremely, it was, of course, we, you know, I don't want to take anything away from my kids because they did everything that, that uh, they had to do to win it and they won it in style. And, uh, but the most important thing for this football team right now is to take the experiences of the first three games and use it and get better each week. And we're going to work like a devil to be better against Western Carolina. We've got a lot of areas that we can improve in. All right, we'll be back with Western Carolina next week. <laughs> Thank you for watching. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye, Pat Channel 12, WSFA, Montgomery. strange feeling then. It's a strange feeling because we played four football games and you really haven't been in a tough contest yet. And uh, that, uh, that we don't want to put ourselves in the posture to not be ready for that tough contest when it comes about because it's coming. It's coming. I don't, I ain't afraid to go into any kind of contest with you against anybody in the country. We just want to be dang sure that we're ready when we get, when that thing time arrives. We want to present you with a game ball for your 100th victory. Thank you. We're proud yeah. of you. Thank you very much. The Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye is brought to you to the Auburn Football Review. Another big win for the Tigers yesterday, 55-6 to over Western Carolina. And uh, something of a milestone uh, for the coach, his 100th uh, career victory. Congratulations uh, two times there, Coach. Thank you, Phil. I, you know, I really, I haven't even thought about the thing unless somebody mentioned it. And I was just a guy, I got tickled at uh, looking at that on television because Jeff Berger went to Frank Cox and supposedly got a game ball, and <laughs> and 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 Frank Cox, our quick equipment manager, gave him an old white ball and <laughs> had scars and was ragged and kind of like, well, I guess it kind of looked like me. The athletic director appreciates that he's being economical. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, it was. Uh, I, I I think the game. I hope the game was good for us. We got to play a lot of people and. Uh, it was, I, th I think we got better again last week, and, um, I, you know, I just feel like the signs that this football team is showing, and, uh, I, you know, I, I mentioned in the dressing room that uh, it's kind of a strange feeling because we played four games and haven't been 
in a real close ball game yet. And but I'm you know I'm confident with with what we're doing. I'm confident with the players and and our plan. But I think that, uh, you know, the time's coming when we're going to have to come from behind to beat somebody or uh, get in one of those hostile arenas where the noise factor is, uh, you know, is, is makes it more difficult for you. Um, one thing that uh, yesterday, that, of course, uh, that uh, we've been trying to, to emphasize that uh, our defense really, really got into the to the floor of the football game and scored uh, two touchdowns and set up two more touchdowns. And I really think that we can develop into that kind of defensive football team if they'll really just take pride in, in uh, making things happen on defense, and they have been. But uh, I don't, uh, I'm not sure that they really had a, had a, uh, uh, the right kind of picture of just what a defense can do as far as disruption and destruction on the, as far as the offense is concerned. But we had two uh, defensive tackles to score, and like I said, we, uh, mm -hmm. Russ Character had a couple of interceptions, ran one of them back to the one-yard line and set up another touchdown, and Rodney Garner recovered a fumble, I think, at the 13 and mm -hmm. set up one. So uh, that's the reason the score was as, as lopsided as it was because our defense got uh, four touchdowns. Of course, the offense played well, too, and. I thought Jeff had another good day throwing the football, and uh, we had the opportunity to play Reggie Slack a lot. And he really threw uh, well. Well, you know, I just think that, again, it was a, a day for our offense to, to grow, and I think that our specialty teams did a much better job covering kicks yesterday. Uh, and we just go from here. Okay, let's go in the dressing room and see some of the faces you don't normally see. Uh, these are the touchdown twins. Uh, uh, tell me about yours, Malcolm. Uh, Andre Bruce came on a good pass rush, and he deflected it with my hands. Yeah, so. but you showed those quick feet, didn't you? I don't know what ball? it was. I just saw a goal line. I just went for it. <laughs> uh, thrill, yours was easier than his. All you had to do is find it. Just fall on it. Just fall on it. <laughs> I, don't, I can never remember when a defensive tackle scored two touchdowns. Have you ever seen anything like that? No. <laughs> uh, me either. Coach Heron wanted uh, the linebackers to improve because we were missing a lot of tackles on the kickoff team. So I went out there and I tried to take his head off and he turned into my shoulder. And so it, it, it's okay. I don't believe it's possible to come closer to scoring. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I had it for a second, but um, I saw the guy and I really wasn't even, you don't think about it, something like that when you don't do it very often. And I was just thinking go for the corner and I guess I didn't make it, but uh, it was close, I guess. I'm not sure how many he threw. He threw a lot of outs, so and I complete a lot of those. We got to work on those. But I didn't go deep too, too much. But uh, just the outs, we got to work on because they're going to be throwing Vanderbilt be throwing there if they see this film. First interception, huh? Yes, that's the first one. And I was kind of surprised by it because the receiver had f fallen down and um, I just stood back there and waited on him. You know. All of a sudden, it's coming at you, huh? Yeah. I saw the quarterback rolling out, and I saw, saw him he had his throwing hand in there like he was going to throw the ball. And I just went and I tried to keep him from throwing the ball. And the next thing I knew, I had him and I, he was on the ground and the ball was rolling in the end zone. I looked up and I saw Nate Hill. I heard the crowd scream and I saw Nate Hill following the ball. You ought to give you a habit that one. Yeah. <laughs> Describe the, uh, touch, the first touchdown. Um, everybody picked up their block and uh, that's what Kyle Allen was in a blitzing situation. They blitzed towards the outside. So there wasn't nobody in the middle. I just hit the hole running full speed. All you just had to do is stay on your feet. Huh? <laughs> that's all. Do you feel now you'd be ready to go into a big game? Yeah, I feel, I feel confident in, my, in myself. I think I could go, do it if uh, something happened, you know, where Jeff couldn't go. I think I could do the job. The mass bands at the beginning of the game yesterday for the National Anthem, quite a sight. Uh, you can see that stadium, the upper deck, growing by the week. It's really amazing. Well, that you know, I think in another year we'll have this kind of playing facility as it is in the country. Mm -hmm. We start right here with Brent Fullwood running the lead draw and take this one down and get a field goal out of it and had a five-yard penalty that kept us from, kind of broke the drive. He's throwing a quick screen to Duke Donaldson. And I think that uh, offensively uh, we, we may still be trying to do a little too much, but we've got all the two great throw and catch right here to Trey Gaines, and boy, this scared me to death right here. This is the most flagrant I've ever seen. Well, I tell you, just uh, you know, I'm uh, just—it was awful. 
Is he okay? I just, yeah, I think so. He said it hurt his neck and run the option and pitch it to, to Brent. And Brent picks up six, seven yards going down to the... And then we come back and we throw a, a screen. <laughs> Have to end up throwing it downfield. Had a best of assignment on it. <coughs> Snap gets a 44-yarder. You can see right here that, I, like I said, I kick kickoff coverage is much better. Quentin Riggins, big play, but all day long those guys on the kickoff team were getting down there and, and making things happen. And fine play by Kurt Crane, and um, I couldn't tell whether that was Shan Morris or who else up there. But Kurt Crane again with Andre Bruce. <coughs> They have a well-conceived uh, Well, I th they, you know, they, plan. They, I think the plan, you know, in the coaching job, they, you know, the plan was good. It was just that, that they got overpowered at times mm -hmm. with the pass rush, and but they, you know, they did a lot of good things in the game. Here's Jeff throwing to Lawyer Tillman, and look at him get up off the ground and go get the. <laughs> he starts pretty high up anyway at six five. Well, he's really uh, works as hard. Here's a touchdown. Great blocking by Yen Cowett, Ben Tamarello, and Tommy A.G. picked up his guy. You can see Ben as Pat Johnson and offensive line just comes off the ball, faces Earls and Jim Thompson. And Looks like an a, Outland Trophy block there. That's was. also an excellent call by, by Larry Blakeney and because they were they were coming with the blitz from the outside and, and good coverage. I thought yesterday we, you know, for the most part that we had good movement. I think we intercepted four passes. Good throw and catch on the bootleg right here to uh, Scott Bolton. Our little old receivers are playing well. Mm -hmm. As uh, James Joseph again, we only played Brent and James Joseph yesterday, and after we got a hit in the ball game, we really played James most of the way. And Brent hardly his, broke a sweat, didn't he, coach? Well, he's, you know, his days are coming <laughs> for sure. Ooh, that's great running, movie. great running right there by Reggie Ware. And Reggie, Reggie, no doubt, got better in practice last week. It's a third down and nine at the nine-yard line, a big play here. I thought he was in the end Great catch right there by Duke Donaldson. And, you know, it was a close. To they uh, played a couple of freshmen yesterday that we hadn't played, Frank Thomas and Craig Ogletree, and there's uh, Reggie Ware going in. There's a good shot of Reggie on the sideline. Big, strong youngster. Means Quiet a lot to our, Well, he means a lot to our football team. Good hit right there by Tommy Powell and, and uh, Brian Smith and Kurt Crane. Good pressure. Pummel recovered by Rodney Garner. Put the ball at the 14 yard line and, and uh, he take this one in. There's up the <coughs> offensive line. Now we're in the second quarter. That was just the end of the first. That's a great catch right here by Lawyer Tillman. And, and of course, Jeff is developing the, the confidence in Lawyer and knows that he's you know, got that great height and jumping ability. And he's so strong in his hands, he can just go up like that. And, and take a take a ball away from a defender and great play right here by Andre Bruce. They were, had a little double pass they were fixing to pull, I believe. Coming on a blitz and as Russ character, I believe he intercepted this thing quite as a screen and for yeah. Coach here and has done a great job with the linebackers and and uh, had him playing that thing perfect. We come back with a little old state play on the goal line with Reggie Slacks and Reggie could have run all thrown in. It was, he chose to keep it and run it in. I guess that proves that a quarterback would rather run for a touchdown and throw for a touchdown because <laughs> he had either one. Fine play right there by Richard Manry. Look for him in the dressing room and he took an early shower or something, Coach. Well, there was a good article in our program yesterday. Interception by Carlo Cheatham. Good article in our program yesterday about our walk-on program. And mm -hmm. We had... Uh, 16 walk-ons that played in the game yesterday, some of them on scholarship. Here's Reggie Slack going to Alexander Wright. And you're going to see there's a big freshman, Frank Thomas, in there. And we're playing a lot of young folks. There's another oh, That's James not Joseph, bad there, Coach. James Joseph and... Um, 
I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just really pleased with the progress that the youngsters have made. And, and uh, you know, I'm not naive enough to think that we played a tough schedule and know that, you know, we we in for some some battles down the road. But uh, I sure do like the attitude and what I see is the signs of a bunch of kids going together and making a good football team. They had a great kicker and <coughs> kicks a field goal here and makes it uh, 34 to three. That's that's really the, they took it down the field and and earned that field goal. Sure did. They completed a lot of passes. Look at there. They can whip that thing. They just got a strong arm throwing the uh, Trey Gainus comes back here hits uh, Scott Bolton over the middle. I think we take this one in. I got an interception score. right here. Do we get an interception? Mm -hmm. Questionable interception, however. Looks like he juggled the ball before he took it. Looks like it. it. <laughs> oh, well, he did. <laughs> uh, you, I saw well, you complaining you know, a little bit about well, that. Well, I so. did. I did. And, you know, there's no doubt it was uh, he was juggling the ball. And, of course, there's a great play by Andre Bruce, and Nate Hill falls on in the end zone for the touchdown. <laughs> 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 That okay. makes it uh, what forty-one to three. Forty-one to three at the and half, half and, uh, and really, you know, the interception. But uh, we hadn't done a lot. To, we had. You know, we're trying to get to be a. I want us to get be as near perfect as we can be. We had a five-yard penalty on the first touchdown drive where we shifted and sent motion, and the motion guy didn't wait for the guy to get set that he shifted, and it's just little things like that that we've got to perfect because a five-yard penalty at the 15-yard line will get you beat in a close ball game. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a matter of concentration and discipline. And uh, we're working hard at it, and I think we're getting better, but we're not 100% yet. We'll be back in just one minute. Auburn has one of the top ROTC programs in the country. Yesterday, they honored, uh, I guess, their number one ROTC alumnus in a very special way. Steve Beverly has a story. Forty-two years ago, young Lieutenant Bill Nichols was overseas fighting for the country he loved. Saturday morning, the university he still loves remembered him. They came from Alabama, from Washington, from all over the nation, family members and close friends to celebrate the dedication of the William F. Nichols ROTC Center. Not even an overcast sky could dull the excitement at the $2 million complex. Few people have done as much to strengthen this country's defense as has Congressman Nichols. The new building houses Auburn's nationally recognized Army, Navy, and Air Force ROTC unit. Inside will also be a portrait of Congressman Nichols, which was unveiled Saturday. For Nichols, a Purple Heart winner, it was a day of heartfelt emotions. I accept this building in behalf of those Auburn men who paid the supreme sacrifice so that we Americans and countless other people throughout the world might escape the bonds of tyranny. From Auburn, this is Steve Beverly reporting. You know, the diversity of a great university always amazes me, the things that go on there. Well, I congratulate Senator. He was a good man. Uh, he was just a, a great person and uh, has meant so much to to me personally and the athletic department since uh, mm -hmm. I've been at Auburn and I'm sure before I got there too, but uh, sure. that's a tremendous tribute to him. What do you uh, what do you say to the team that's leading 41 to three, uh, three at the half? Well, we just, uh, <laughs> we had 30 minutes of football left and we want to take it as an opportunity to grow and, and be better. And uh, you know, they, I don't think that uh, you know, they are playing hard. Great tackle right there by Ron Stallworth. And <coughs> we're doing a... Certainly you know, got a we, lot of... We, we, we're doing a lot of things in the secondary and mixing up the coverages. And we come out to... The, probably the worst part of the ball game right here is not getting this football off the goal line. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it resulted in a, you know, in a field goal form. 
Now we certainly that formal snap on the punt right there was the ultimate reason. But if we get the ball on out and get it out for him, kick it into the other end of the field, and chances are they they had too much time here and this saw the flag the drop. Back. Saw the flag drop just before the. <coughs> now watch the goal line stand. Great tackle by Tommy Powell and Kurt Crane mm -hmm. and. Couldn't see who the other one was uh, right here. Ron Stallworth and Brian Smith. And didn't play Garrett Kelly yesterday because of a nerve in his uh, pinched nerve. And uh, didn't play Lee Mark Sellers or Tim Jesse. Held him out of the game. And I think we lost Trent Ulrich for the rest of the season. He's with a knee on the kickoff. Of course, Trent was a walk-on guy that's on our specialty teams. Mark Rose. There's a new face. <coughs> Mark was a tight end, we, uh, defensive end. We moved to, to tight end. And uh, Reggie hit him with just a little quick cat, pass across the middle. Brian the, only, the only punt, 49 yards. Good coverage, one missed tackle. <laughs> they come in again and just pressure and thought we did an excellent job of playing the screens and there's a touchdown by Malcolm McCreary. Malcolm is <laughs> and we call that spiking the ball right there. If that's, <laughs> mm, I asked my Malcolm coming off the field he got a 15 yard penalty for that and I just didn't see where that was un sportsmanlike or whatever. <clears throat> it must have been a thrill for a defensive tackle to talk to the well, press I box coaches. Him, I asked him, I said, Malcolm, did you spike that ball in the end zone? He said, Coach, I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> <laughs> the things were happening too fast at that oh, time. Oh, <laughs> goodness. Good, good contact right there by Alex Perlin and <laughs> Quentin Riggins. And of course, mm -hmm. like I said, we got everybody playing. and They missed a the field goal here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You'll have 51 pass Here's plays Reggie. to look at, Coach. Reggie, be a lot of Reggie Slack again at quarterback and pulls the ball down and picks up about eight or nine yards. And uh, you're going to see a strong arm right here. Watch him. He just kind of flicks that thing down there. This is a 34-yard gain to Robert Eli. Robert is a walk-on from Mozart, Alabama. Works hard in practice every day. Drops back and hits. Vincent Harris with a little screen. It's invaluable to get these guys into the offense <clears> and get them some playing. There's a draw to James Joseph. James has is, is really not been healthy all fall, and he's not right now. He's still playing with full groins and is not as quick and as fast as he's going to be. Brent Fullwood uh, with a little <coughs> block on that. <coughs> Brent, I believe, uh, probably Reggie, Reggie Ware. Another great play by uh, Russ Carriker. I know that they worked on that pay play all week long last week and practiced a little old dump pass to the to the uh, tight end. As a matter of fact, the first time they ran it in the ball game, they completed it. But uh, the next couple of times they completed it to Russ. Tough running there. That's Vincent Harris, and of course the game is winding down there. And that's Robert Smith in that quarterback. Robert's a little walk on that. Uh, Played in the spring game and played early in the year and would have been our backup quarterback had you know had Reggie not come along. Watch this carry. <coughs> Pound Lamb. Pound Lamb is uh, another valuable member of our squad that uh, works every every week on the scout team and he runs the plays for the other guys and a great young man and it will be a outstanding Auburn alumnus one of these days. You got a chance to say hello to Bob Waters. Uh, at <coughs> you know, I thought about moment. I thought about Bob Waters um, field before the game and all week long. And, I, you know, I said, you know, here we are, Auburn playing Western Carolina and right up the road, they got Alabama playing Notre Dame and all of the news media and all of the whatever. And the most courageous man in the state of Alabama yesterday, in my opinion, was Bob Waters. He's fighting Lou Gehrig's disease and still coaching and still carrying on a, a normal life. And as a matter of fact, he flew to Houston and 
on yeah. Wednesday and flew into Auburn on Friday to meet his team for the game. And Quigman, I bet when he talks about courage and commitment, I bet uh, his players uh, really listen. We'll be back in just a minute to talk about Vanderbilt. Herb Schmeley. a big win for you and I know it's a frustrating thing to play that way in the first half and come back out the second half and we don't feel like we got anything to show for your efforts and but uh, that's the way it is and we'll learn from it and benefit from it down the road so it's a mighty big win I think we do need to sing though yeah. 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 we need to sing Get some. Uh, uh, one two three <laughs> Auburn football review. Big win in Nashville yesterday. Number five on the year. Second win in the conference. Auburn 31 and Vanderbilt 9. What a first half, Coach. But did you make an early flight home? <laughs> well, the uh, we, I got kind of tickled at Thomas Powell in there because he got kind of stunned in the <laughs> in the game and uh, we got ready to sing there and one of the players asked him if he could remember the song. <laughs> but uh, I feel it was a big win for us, and I felt like at the first of the game we was ready to play as we've been all year long and played about as well in the first half as as we could play in the second half. Uh, you, you, it, it's, a, it's a frustrating thing to, as a coach, and I'm sure it is uh, probably to the players too, because you got a 31 to 3 lead, and then you get you get out of uh, sync with your your play calling and how you play defense and how you want to handle your offense and you want everybody to play and you don't want to get ragged and, and uh, it just uh, kids played hard in the second half and uh, I think the concentration level dropped a little bit probably and uh, but we won the game and it was a big win for us and I think that uh, I don't think we got anybody hurt and uh, there's another conference game and Vanderbilt deserves a lot of kid, uh, credit because that kid stayed in there and, you know, and uh, the game was virtually over and they fought hard throughout the contest and, and uh, again, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a great day and uh, a little bit of frustration in the second half, but uh, I got to be pleased with, the, with the, our first road trip and... Uh, the way they were ready to play. Right, and, and I, uh, I, I know it sounds like a broken record, but, uh, you know, on the trip to Nashville, it's just a, a great group of kids to be around and watch them and, and um, to be with. Mm. You're right. And uh, we'll go in the dressing room now. We'll, we'll talk to some of the players, and then we'll talk to some of the young guys on the flight home because this, for many of them, were, was their first uh, road trip. It's been the best first half, huh? Yeah, we came right out, and uh, a lot of things were going for us, and uh, we were really ready to play, and it showed. And we popped a few big plays. We didn't have any sustained drives. and uh, But uh, it was exciting the first half, and the second half, we, I think the concentration was leveled off a little bit, and we just had we just struggled a little bit. Y'all had it going in the first half? Yeah, had it going. Just wish we could have, you know, scored more points in the second half. Well, that'll give the coaches something to talk about next week. Right? Yeah, give us something to do next week, too. <laughs> You know, our defense went out there and played a, played a real good game today, and, and the offense going to have to catch up with the defense. And um, in order to do that, we're going to have to go out and work and work and work, and that's the only way to get, catch up with the defense because they're just playing they're just playing great ball now. How does it feel when you intercept the football and you suddenly got it? Well, it felt great, you know. <laughs> I haven't ran the football in a long time and changed the pace a little bit, so it felt great. Maybe maybe the defense is a little is up one on the offense. You all presented them with the ball several times uh, in the second half, and they didn't get it. In. Well, I don't see it as we being up on offense. We uh, our goal is to turn the ball over to the offense as many times as we can in the game, and uh, so uh, that's what we go out to do. 
Good win, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. I wish the offense had put some more points, though, <laughs> second half. On that delay over the middle, weren't you, they had you dropping back late in the game, didn't you? Yeah, uh, second half, we had to adjust to it, and we got a defense, you know, where I take draws and screens, and I had to back out, so uh, the back, you know, he was going to try to delay in the middle, and I had it by myself. So you playing pass defense? Yeah, That's switch, huh? I wanted to pick one off. <laughs> this your first trip? Yes, sir. How you like this flying? Um, it's pretty fun, you know. It's uh, my fourth time flying, but um, so I'm kind of used to it and everything. Yeah. Okay. Greg. Yes. Your first flight? Yes, it is. What do you think? Scary. Oh, come on. Yes, it is. Very scary. It's a different experience, though. Yeah. You, you don't. Everything is just like that, back to back. Yeah. So you don't have the time like you have at home. So That's it's, it's different. How does it feel to go on the road and play now? This is your first one in college football. It feels great considering that we won. Uh, yeah. Had we lost, it probably been a different experience. Yeah. But you liked it, huh? Oh, definitely. It was the first fall day. It's about 70 degrees and windy. That's, that's right, because we start with a great kickoff return by Tommy A.G. gets a good blocking, and I tell Ken Morris and, and uh, Vincent Harris, and there's James Joseph out in front, and we run it back to around the 40-yard line. That's a nice way to begin. Come right out and hit a little quick screen, pick up five yards, and then Brent's going to score with the next one. <coughs> I just, you know, talking with you while the commercials are on still that Vic does a fine job with our photography and picking up things at the ball game it's just great blocking right there by Walter Reeves and uh, Stacy Searles and uh, Tommy picked up one and and Brent hits that crease and a little quickness there and I think uh, Trey made a block on the outside <laughs> Look at that. Now, that's teamsmanship over on the side. Oh, our kids are having a great time, and they are getting closer and closer. And Good kick coverage yesterday. They had one little breakdown as uh, Richard Manning was captain of the specialty teams. Quentin Riggins, his first play from scrimmage for Vanderbilt and results a touchdown for Auburn, and great hit right there by Tommy Powell, and Kirk Crane gets on it in the end zone for the touchdown. The pummel was caused by Andre Bruce. You can see the penetration coming right there. Ooh. <laughs> <coughs> That's called messing up the offense, Coach. Phil, I want to tell you something. That number 93 right there is playing as good as any defensive end that we've had at Auburn and probably as good as any defensive end in the country right now. He comes right here on another big play and actually tips the ball in the quarterback's arm and, and it's a kind of a floating, oh. fluttering pass. And he is again play. right there and had a cold fumble there. Tracy Rocker goes in there and gathers them all up and... and uh, <laughs> Andre catches him from behind. <coughs> little drive here for them. Right, they, they take this one down, and of course, Vanderbilt knows something about throwing the football. Coach Brown has, always has a good play by Tommy Powell, and, and uh, ball's tipped here by... Uh, we had a bunch of tipped balls yesterday. That was Nate Hill, and, and uh, they kick a field goal, and it's 14-3. to three. That's good. I give... Uh, Talking about Andre, Coach Witt and Andre have been working in at war, and, and as Jeff throwing to Walter Reeves, and uh, he's a great basketball player coming out of high school, and, and uh, played I on think state championship team. Probably would have thrown to Lawyer Tillman, run the draw to James Joseph, <coughs> and uh, we take this one down and kick a field goal. But uh, he's just gotten better and better and better, and, and uh, of course he is a great, you know, great athlete. As Tracy Rocker again, and uh, Brian Smith looked like he played an outstanding football game yesterday. I haven't checked with Coach Witt on the grades and all, but had Benji Rowland making a nice play. Had three tackles. As Tracy Rocker pressure from inside and Brian Smith catches him from the backside and quarterback sack and see one thing that as, is a tough quarterback he's coach. tough and has great pressure again by Tracy Rocker and Tracy looked like he had another outstanding game yesterday had two sacks and, and uh, just playing like Tracy's supposed to play they kick a field goal or uh, we'll miss a field goal I guess and we get it back and 
we coaches from the press box, we had scouted and we felt like that this was going to be a, a opportunity to get a big play off of them, off of a fake sweep and throw down the middle and it worked just like we'd worked on it in practice. And Collis Campbell's running tough up inside and great block right here by Brent Fullwood. Watch him hit that number 52 mm. and, and uh, Reggie Ware kicks that one out and they got Collis in the end zone and <coughs> we're glad to have Collis back and his teammates love him, and, and nobody's more excited about making that block. Because I listen, Brent's right there talking on the like sideline. Like, see, <laughs> you see that block? <laughs> That's great when Brent Fullwood's talking about blocking him. <laughs> they, uh, well, he's a great ball carrier, and he's an outstanding blocker. Great pressure sack by Tracy Rocker and Gary Kelly. Pressure again has. Was that, that was either Nate Hill or, or Nate Andre Hill. Bruce Nate Hill. from the back side. Yeah. <coughs> Draw play to Brent. Good blocking inside. Mm. Uh, that was a first and 25 play. We had gotten a 15-yard penalty for clipping, and there's Tim Thompson picking him up and just dumping the ball off to Tommy Ag. Picks up five or six yards. We worked this one around, and great throw and catch right here by Jeff Berger and Scott Bolton. <coughs> excellent, excellent protection. Run the reverse. Got Nobody to every, block. everybody out there, and Stacy Searle makes the final block here to get him in the end zone. That's John Hudson, freshman center, and Jim Thompson, and nobody to block. So we go. 31 to 3, and yeah, you did get your one, Scott. <laughs> Fine play by Nate Hill. Our defensive football team is playing really well. They heard us some throwing the football, but uh, we bent but didn't break as they try to reverse against us. And there's Andre Bruce and Benji Rowland and Ron Stallworth and Edward Phillips. And it's 31 to 3 at the half. We'll be back in just a minute. Cynic circles you sometimes hear about burnout in the classroom. Well, Steve Beverly has a report on a man who still finds the classroom challenging and exciting. Vanderbilt probably wanted to do in the first half what they did to start the second half, hold the ball a long time. And that seemed to, you know, to, to work very well for us. Well, you know, we were in a, uh, they did a, a I think an outstanding job of, of taking advantage of what we were doing defensively in the second half and, the, and I, looking at the film, I can't see any lack of effort on Auburn's part to, to help them any, but they made some big plays themselves and moved the football. We made some big plays on defense and mm -hmm. fine play right there by Alex Berlin on the kickoff return. There's nice. Andre Bruce right back in the middle of them disrupting the offense again and an Benji Rowland comes in and drive. kind of cleans it up. Well, they completed the quarterback pulls the ball down and scrambles, and Richardson's made him a better football team. Mm. <clears> a <throat> quarterback. He's uh, he's more mobile than, than the other kid is, and uh, he's a competitor, and that's fine play by Vanderbilt and tackled by Chan Morris. There's Brian Smith again keeping, well, I guess he did make a first down, but it was close, and uh, they are going for the touchdown on first and goal at the five and uh, quarterback overthrows them. This is a great goal line stand right here, uh, right. Phil. Right. And uh, again, the incomplete pass. Well, here comes a pressure. near, near great play here. Well, it's good coverage on the part of Kurt Crane and Jen Morris and, and both of them are there to break it up and <coughs> that puts them in a fourth down situation and they kick the field goal and make it 31 to to six and uh, again you know it was a great drive by Vanderbilt but our defense did a great job of keeping them out of, out of the end zone and uh, here's a draw play and we don't pick up much here and offensively we seem to have lost the edge at the half and again it was uh, Jeff can't find anybody open and pulls it down and runs it <coughs> they, they hold us and Brian Schumann punting. Brian is from Nashville and 
of course, doing a great job for us. We have good coverage on the kick as John Dobbs and Chan Morris and Pat Moat down there. Uh, the linebackers? As Lamar Rogers, and we consider considering playing Lamar. He's, we just don't really know whether to play him or not to play him. Smokey Hodge, of course, is out with a knee injury, and we probably need to play him. And there's good pressure right there by Craig Oglefield, freshman, and we speed up while ago. I guess we're playing seven or eight true freshmen. And good play right here by Kurt Crane and Andre Bruce on that little misdirection play that was effective for him. Good coverage on the part of, I believe that was uh, uh, Carlo Cheatham, sacked by Tracy Rocker. And the defense is playing hard and having a good time playing, and they kick another field goal and make it 31 to 9. Again, the defense been a little, but it didn't break. Seemed like you. It's a great play by the offense. Outstanding block there by Frank Thomas, the tight end, and uh, I believe that was uh, as Tommy Ag right there and Reggie Ware right there clearing the way for Brent, and I believe he takes us from 55 yards. And I really, I don't know, Brent pulled a hamstring a little bit in practice last week and I just got to believe that if he was 100% he would have carried that one the distance. Seven carries for Brent, 140 yards. So his average per carry will go up. This is a, that was to me the biggest mistake in the ball game right there. First of all, calling that play because it was a play action play, play and long yardage and they were playing the pass all the way and it really didn't give Jeff a chance to be successful and we got plays to call in that kind of situation. We just ended. Nice interception here by Alvin Mitchell. And he takes it back to the six, seven yard line. <clears throat> Watch this. <laughs> that's, that's one of Vic's camera deals right there. Collis Campbell running and <clears throat> You can see that Vanderbilt's playing hard. We turn it back over to them down there close. They take it and move it a little bit. Here's good pressure right here by Craig Ogletree and Malcolm McCrary. Sack the quarterback. Here's another fine play by Craig Ogletree. He gets up and bats that ball down. And a good pressure, good pressure right there by Nate Hill. Dumps the ball off and they're going on fourth down here. Fourth down and this is a great shot right here. Another one by our cameraman. That's of course Chip Powell intercepting. We have good sudden change with the with the pass. It turns it to the 15 yard line. And this is what a father looks like when his son intercepts the pass. <laughs> That's Horace Powell of Prattville. That's his son <coughs> who intercepted the ball. <laughs> it's Vincent Harris running inside. An old coach, too, by the way. I think his second half is a, a Reggie Slackett quarterback. Fine play by the Vanderbilt defender. <clears throat> Knocks the ball away at the last second. There's the core of the Auburn offense right there, Coach. Well, that's Ben Tamborella and, and um, I know their receivers were sore today because they really got hit down that secondary yesterday yes, catching those passes. There's a fine interception on Alvin Briggs' part. And that kind of closes the door on any hope or chance that they had to score. And there's Coach Brown that uh, is an outstanding young coach and is going to do a great job at Vanderbilt. Had a good offense. Welcome, Watson. Watson was on our staff at East Carolina and, and um, he's just, uh, he's got a young football team right now that, that is playing hard and uh, Obviously, in the second I, half, they had well, nothing I, to play for. They just I played on Friday. Watson that they're doing the right things. They're just, just you know, to to keep on doing what they're doing. And as they get a little older and a little more experienced, they're going to be, you know, they'll be better. And uh, it's awful hard on a football coach when when you're in that uh, situation and you're doing everything that you can do, and you know the kids are playing hard to and and still not winning and. Uh, 
Like 81, huh? Well, that's right. And, and it's hard not to lose your confidence and, and think that, you know, there may be more, something more that you can do. And, and when you get in that situation and you start pressing, then really you do more harm then than you do good. You just got to have faith in your plan and, and what you are doing and your confidence and your ability to, to coach. We'll be back in just a minute. <clears throat> Time Tech got their situation straightened out. They scored well, better than anybody else. Around. I don't know what uh, what in the world happened in Atlanta yesterday. I understand that Mays a little tailback rush for 180 yards, and uh, but I would imagine that their defense probably turned the football over to the offense or scored some points on defense for them to be able to score that many points. That's normally the way you run up the scores like that, but. Uh, I've been I've been a little bit surprised that Georgia Tech hadn't hadn't uh, I thought they were going to have a fine football team coming in and I'm surprised that they haven't won some of the couple of games that they lost but uh, they'll be uh, the best football team that we've played on the schedule so far and we've got to do a great job of getting ready to play and um, it will be another challenge for us. It certainly will. Rec Tech Parade and all of that. <coughs> we'll see you next week with the replay of Auburn Georgia Tech. Thank you. No turnovers. No turnovers. Defense got a couple in the second half, I know. And we got some folks hurt today. Uh, we got to we got to close ranks, get a little closer, gain some strength from each other now. And and uh, you know what we got facing us in Starkville next Saturday. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, 72,000 at Jordan-Hare Stadium saw Auburn beat an old rival Georgia Tech 31 to 10, and uh, personally, I'm sure it was a nice day for the Dye family. Well, it was a beautiful day for football, first of all, Phil, and, and uh, you know, to, to get to the campus on Saturday morning and see the campus and the folks out cooking breakfast and... <laughs> lunch and the kids running everywhere and it's just uh, a football game at Auburn is, uh, is an event. I mean, it's uh, it's a lot more than just a game, I can assure you, but... Uh, I'm surprised you were in condition to notice <coughs> things like that on Saturday morning. <laughs> well, it's... Uh, it's uh, you can't help but notice it. And I think everybody that comes to Auburn on Saturday notices it. And, of course, the football game kind of icing on the cake and I thought again we played extremely well the first half and the second half we we didn't execute quite as well and uh, just uh, but again it was a it was a big win for us Georgia Tech's I think has got a, a fine offensive football team defensively they're very young and and uh, we had some great play <coughs> a lot of it a lot of great plays. Great plays and, and individual efforts, and of course it was a team win. Everybody contributed, and the kicking game stood up, and the defense stood up, and the offense scored the points, and it was um, Jeff Berger, I thought, had his finest game in the first half, and Lawyer Tillman came up with a couple of great catches, and Brent Fullwood probably was never better than he was running the football yesterday. You're right, particularly when you, uh, when you needed to have that lift and... <coughs> in the third quarter. Well, he, he really gave it to us. Uh, uh, Georgia Tech uh, appeared to have gained a little of the momentum and went out and scored and, and uh, just immediately our offense took it away from them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of those guys who had big plays yesterday. 
In view of the way you play today, do you have any more wisdom teeth we could pull for this week, huh? <laughs> well, I hope not. I don't ever want to go through that again. But uh, I think we did, we did a good job first half. And, uh, you know, something we got to get out of is having that dull and that, that in the second half, that drag. And um, I wasn't as mentally sharp second half. And, you know, I'm not happy with that, but I'm happy with the first half. And, uh, but old 22 bounced out of that pretty good. Britt did, a, Britt did a, you know, that's something that, that we've got going for. For us, when when things aren't going for us in the passing game, the running game always comes through. And it just seemed like their defense was getting fired up, and I was just all about the yell that we had when they came over here and scored 35 points. And anything that I can do, I didn't want that to happen. So I just went out there and just started talking to the offensive line and talking to everybody that we needed to pick it up. And we picked up and run and scored. The play was designed, to, uh, you know, really for the back end, but I was somehow I got open, and uh, and Jeff saw me, and luckily. <laughs> Yeah. Frank, on the fourth down play, you had to make a pretty good catch, didn't you? The guy was all over you. Yeah, we had been working on that yesterday, last couple of days. And I really had been dreaming about the play, and it worked like it was in practice, and I was happy for it. But you get kind of excited against these Georgia guys, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Being from Georgia, I have to. Can't go home if we lose against them. A couple of sacks and stuff? Yeah. Uh, wish I could get a couple more. But <laughs> I, can, I get them next week, I hope. It's a great win. <laughs> Every win's great. Yeah, but <laughs> well, they had some kind of modern version of the wedge on kickoff returns, didn't they? Uh, yeah. You guys kind of must have liked that. It gave you... <laughs> Y'all tried to attack and destroy it, didn't you? Yeah, we, uh, when we see that wedge, we just try and run right through it and, uh, get to the ball carry. So, you had a big one today, huh? Yeah, I had a pretty good lick on that, um... Are you gonna enjoy watching film Sunday? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be worth it this Sunday to watch it. Okay. You may have lost one of your, one of your best guys. What's gonna happen there? I don't know, you know, um... It's hard playing without Tom, you know, because he, he does a lot of things for all of us, you know, not just making the plays that he makes, but just being the kind of person he is. And it's, 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 it's really a blow, you know, like I told another guy, you know, we got to all come together and everybody has to play that much better, you know, to compensate for Tom being gone. You get a little excited when you go up against the Allen Trophy candidate, huh? Yeah, like I was telling him, it's, it's great to go up against a better player because that, 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 uh, Let's me get better on down the road. How'd you play him? How'd you try to play him? Well, I, I tried to, you know, uh, I tried to use my quickness. I didn't think he was that quick off the ball, and, and I just wanted to use my quickness to get off his block and, and make the play. Looked pretty good. Had some play. Yes, I sure did. Uh, uh, some sometimes he got me. He, he walled me off because he, he was so big with that. You know, some plays I, I would out quick and make the play. Well, did you catch your one hand first? Well, I slowed it down with my other hand and just brought my other hand, my up, the right hand over to fill it in and just covered it up. We used to have a different insurance company. Beautiful day, and you're going to see your team go get behind. Well, it was, a, it was a great day, except for Tommy Powell getting hurt. Yeah. Uh, Phil and you know, Thomas, just like Kevin Porter said, is, he's an inspiration to all of us. And I went by his room last night, and he and his mother and friends were in there. And I told him that I said that you got to be operated on, but just as soon as you can get back out there, we can't. We can't use your talent and your physical ability, but we can use your spirit and your strength in a lot of other ways. And as I thought that defensively, and you can look at the film, we played hard, and Georgia Tech's got a fine offensive football team. Fine play by Andre Bruce and Nate Hill, and I haven't talked to any of the coaches about the grades and so forth. Benji Rowland and, and uh, Kurt Crane and Nate Hill and Brian Smith and Kip Powell made some great plays yesterday at corner. And <clears throat> just uh, uh, you can't you can't really single out his the first play of the game, fine block by Tommy A. G. and Jim Thompson. And <clears throat> first time this year, Auburn's been behind. I didn't realize that. Of course, it didn't take long to fix that up and. We run the sprint draw, and Brent makes about 10 or 12 yards. I believe that was a third down long play. And right. Jeff comes back and hits uh, Walter Reeves, and uh, tight ends had some big plays for us yesterday. <coughs> Here's it's the play. a great play. You're going to see one of the all-time catches right here. Lawyer goes up with one hand, pulls it in with his other one, and makes a play for the touchdown. And I believe that's his fourth touchdown of the year. Right. <coughs> <coughs> three of them. And all of them have been, yeah. three of them have been long passes, and one of them was, I guess, 15, 16 yarder. And 
you get to where you expect Lawyer to make those plays because he makes them in practice and he's just a, you know, he is a terrific football player and an outstanding young man and works hard in practice. And <coughs> Chasing the quarterback. Fine play by Andre Bruce and, and uh, Tracy Rocker, pressure, and Tommy Powell uh, had a near interception. We just couldn't get uh, and nearly the ball kicked. The coach. Right. <laughs> couldn't get the ball kicked deep enough to set up a return. Jeff was setting up and throwing to Walter Reeves. Jeff was 9 for 11 in the first half for 145 yards. That's tremendous. Well, he, he's just, uh, just, I don't know whether it's, well, I don't know what it is about the second half, but there's, again, you can see good blocking by the offensive line, Ben Cowett and Stacy Searles and Ben Tamborella and <coughs> Reggie Ware making a nice run inside. Vincent Jones, offensive guard, and Brent making another, I guess he's, could you say a patented <laughs> yeah, forward yeah. run? A typical forward run. Mark <laughs> Rose down in front of him blocking. That's a great run right Great here. run for about three yards on a touchdown by Reggie Ware. And we got so many people that are contributing and, and playing very, very important roles in this football team. Reggie Ware and Vincent Harris uh, uh, playing with Tommy A.G. at fullback. Of course, James Joseph and... Tim Jesse, uh, running back with college, you know, the great play by Alex Burns. <laughs> <I'm telling you. coughs> I don't ever recall our, our uh, specialty teams covering kicks any better than we did yesterday. Good penetration by Tracy Rocker and, and uh, Craig Ogletree. Another fine play right here. There's Tommy getting a hand on him, and Craig Ogletree and, and uh, Chan Morris coming up, making a hit on the option. I believe that was Mr. Ogletree right there. I'm not 100% sure. James Joseph running a sweep. I believe that was a third down conversion play. Mm -hmm. Jeff looks one way and then turns back and hits Lawyer on the on the boundary. <coughs> Driving for the here field again, goal here. Here again, he hits Duke Donaldson. I'd say that the, the yesterday the only fault that I could find with a football team in the first half was the penalty. Mm -hmm. and we've had three or four critical penalties in possession now. Fine play by Nate Hill and <coughs> Kurt Crane. And you can see that quarterback is getting pressure and this is a fine fine play by Arthur Johnson and it's been so close so many well, times he just he all, almost had another interception in, in the game but uh, it's good pressure by Nate Hill again excellent coverage and quarterback had to throw the ball away he played uh, guest and strong and I think two very fine quarterbacks outstanding play by Kevin Porter another near interception and there's Tracy Rocker and Arthur Johnson and Andre and Benji and family. And there's Frank Cox, a very, very important part of our organization. I couldn't remember. There's Brent sweep again. <coughs> Five times to the tight end yesterday. Well, he's... Jeff is, I think, getting better and better each week and, and more and more confident and just a uh, fine run by Tim Jesse. <coughs> Third and two right here. Now watch him cross him up. <coughs> well, this is a play that we worked on, and, of course, it, uh, it wasn't as open as I would like to have seen it, but a uh, great throw and catch by Frank Thomas. That's a freshman catching that ball under pressure. <coughs> Fourth and one again. Play, a great play by Jeff Berger. I think. He had tremendous pressure on him, and he finds Walter Reeves in the end zone. Good fake by Reggie, Reggie, Reggie Ware going up over the top, and it's a play that we, we're running out of our wishbone set play-action passes and hit two of them yesterday, and they were, made a big play for us. 
24-3 at the half. Auburn uh, with another fine halftime uh, first half performance. We'll be back in just a minute. The colorful things about this Auburn-Georgia Tech series is, of course, Auburn's Rec Tech Pajama Parade. Steve Beverly reports from Auburn. Unless you're new to Auburn, you no doubt know the legend of the first football game on campus. 1896, Georgia Tech, the opponent. Now, the Jackets were having to come to town by train, so a group of Auburn students sneaked out of a boarding house in their pajamas the night before the game. With buckets of lard in hand, they greased the railroad tracks in the direction of Opelika and Atlanta. Legend has it that as the Tech train tried to break, it slid halfway to Lochapoca. The Tech team had to walk back to Auburn. Thus was born the Auburn tradition of wrecked Techs. That tradition continues, but it may be coming to an end. Next year is the last scheduled game with Tech for a while. But Thursday on the Auburn campus, you'd find it hard put to find sadness that Rec Tech may be no more. I'm from Auburn. This is great. What are you going to do when we don't play Georgia Tech anymore? Well, we're going to have to do it <laughs> Do you mind getting stalled in traffic by all of this? Uh, well, I hope to be here before it got started, but I got a pretty good view. They still come in pajamas, in night shirts, in t-shirts, and no shirts. From those track greasing days in 1896 to the world's largest pajama party. I have a feeling that even after Tech comes off the schedule, there's going to be a wreck somebody parade. After all, it's the one time a year that it's acceptable for just about anything. From Auburn, this is Steve Beverly reporting. I assume they had their wreck Tech parade out in Houston. They usually do. Well, I'm sure they did, but uh, we we ended practice in the stadium and the kids saw the parade and the pep rally and the whole deal and and it uh it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun for the students and, and uh, i think our players got a kick out of it boy this was a <laughs> this was a halftime show here too i, I tell you, you our band can put on a halftime show and they uh our students and fans is it's unbelievable at how much they mean to the football team on the field when you know, they got that game face on and they're doing that thing in the stands. It really makes a difference on the field. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Such a pretty day. <coughs> too, 72 Some pretty girls there, too. You're right, Ms. A.G. All right. Here we go, midway of the third now when uh, Tech gets their drive going. That's a, a sack in, by Craig Ogletree and uh, Ron Stallworth. Fine execution on the part of a great effort on the part of Chip Powell to run this guy down right here. And but Tech gets this one in. That I believe that happened right after Tommy and uh Alvin Briggs got hurt, didn't they? Mm -hmm. <coughs> they actually fumble and recover the ball in the end zone and for the touchdown and it's twenty four to ten. Because it doesn't take us long to well, I guess they stop us right here. Right, on this they series. They stop us on this series. They really have some momentum now. <coughs> great, great kick coverage here. Lee is a very dangerous kick returner. And Alvin, uh, Quentin Riggins and guys on the, on the specialty teams are doing a great job. Options well played. Edward Phillips and Andre Bruce from behind. and. Pressure. One hop. Well, he, it, it wasn't one hop. He had his knee on the ground when he oh, caught the ball. Really so well. they, it was down right there. <coughs> so there's the defense that kind of took him out of that momentum. There's there. a great run by Brent Fullwood. Good block out front by Tommy Ag. Getting some people down there in front of him. Stacy Sturles and Ben and Tommy and Walter Reeves and Yan Cowett. Tommy running inside. For the first down. <coughs> we had to slow this next one down, Coach, so you can see the, uh, well, not this play, but coming well, up. This is another another great run, and Tommy again out front blocking. And slow this one down where you can see the moves this man makes. There's Jim Thompson Whoops. on a good block right there. Whoops. Tommy A.G. Like I said, that, that 
Brett might have had one of his finest days yesterday running the football. As Benson Harris. No dodging when he smells the goal line, though. <laughs> well, he's taking care of the football, and he's doing all of his other things, too. And 183 yards yesterday, <coughs> 21 carries. Why did they? He didn't do much to hurt his average, did he? No, he didn't. But he's getting a lot of help from his teammates. Here comes the wedge again. And the wedge busted. <laughs> and the wedge and busted. And there's uh, Craig Ogletree and Carlo Cheatham and... Ball was tipped by, I'm not sure who, somebody up front there. And Georgia Tech uh, moves the ball on some in this fourth quarter, throwing the ball. I think it was Stallworth. Fine play by Kurt Crane. <coughs> Had some big plays on defense in this, in the latter stages of the game. In fact, we're showing all defenses. Auburn <coughs> kept them out Auburn. of the end zone. Arthur Johnson and Edward Phillips. And great play right here by Chip Powell. I mean, you, you, the little old guy just continues to amaze you with what he's doing for the football team. Is Kurt Crane again, Edward Phillips. <coughs> Tackle chart showed Kurt with 14 unassisted tackles yesterday. Well, he's playing extremely well. Has Nate Hill on another sack, and Nate and Tracy Rocker and Benji Rowland, Stallworth, and Robert Goff, Kurt, and Russ Character, Edward Phillips, Andre Bruce, Gary Kelly has an interception by Chip Powell. They may start Greg throwing Ogles to Kevin's side some, Coach. Right. <coughs> we may look at Kevin a little bit at free safety. We got to come up with a, several different solutions back there. That's a fine play by Alvin Mitchell. Interception by Kurt Crane. Kurt Crane is really playing well. And, and, uh, but defensively, we're playing well. And offensively, I think one thing that uh, if I could say is that you know, I'm a little bit concerned about the consistency with with controlling the football and being able to drive it. We, we're getting the big plays, but we're not getting the consistency that I would like for us to get. This is their last <laughs> time when they tried to get it in, but uh, Auburn held them out at the end of the game. You see that folks are going to the football and fighting and scratching at Quentin Riggins. And, and that's the game. 31 to 10. Auburn wins, I believe, for the seventh or eighth since 78. They well, won it's, been a, it's been a great series, and there's been times when Georgia Tech dominated the game, just like uh, mm -hmm. Auburn has won the last few years, and it's a game that uh, means an awful lot to Auburn people, and I'm sure, sure that over the years it's meant a great deal to the Georgia Tech people, and uh, we hate to lose the series, but we're delighted that we're going to have it every two years. So uh, it's a game that's financially good for both schools. And we can just maintain the, the playing and, you know, maybe on down the road we can get back together on a yearly basis. Let's hope so. We'll be back in just one minute. Secondary and go to play the surprise team in the SEC this year. Well, they're not a surprise to me, Phil. Uh, they've been tough on Auburn. They always since have I, been. You're ever right. Since I've been at, right. at Auburn. And uh, Don Smith is the finest athlete in the conference, the quarterback, and he just does so many things to beat you. And uh, we've got to, as you mentioned, have a great week of preparation. And it's homecoming in Starkville, and uh, they'll have everything in the world going for them. But, uh, we can't do anything about that. The only thing we can do anything about is Auburn, and we've got to be sure that we're ready when we get there. And... Uh, if we can play as good as we can play, then I can accept the results. <laughs> it is ESPN television, huh? Right, it's on television, and I doubt if there's any tickets left for the game. I doubt it. We'll see you next week with the replay of Auburn, Mississippi State. We hope you'll join us. Thank you. For joining us.
Offense for the second week in a row didn't turn the football over. Defense, I don't, I don't know how many you got, four or five or whatever it was. The kicking game was solid, offensively and defensively. It's, uh, it's got to be our finest football game of the year. Now look, we ain't, we're not there. We're still getting better. We are still getting better. When we are good, you don't pay a damn bit of attention to what anybody tells you except me. And I'll tell you when you're good. And until then, we're going to keep working to get better. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Scott Field, Starkville, Mississippi was a nice place to be last night. The Auburn Tigers won 35 to 6. Well, yes, if you're from Auburn. That's well, it was, uh, it was as uh, pretty a night for football as you could ever believe, considering the weather uh, come going up to the game. But, um, Phil, I never dreamed that the game would turn out like it did. And it was, um, I, I think, it had to be our finest game of the year. Uh, no turnovers on offense. <clears throat> I, I am so proud of our coaching staff uh, and our players and the way they prepared themselves to go to Starkville and play the football game. Uh, we knew what kind of atmosphere we were going into, and I think that, uh, you know, they just went about it in a, in a business-like manner last week, and uh, we had some injuries and some things that uh, kids had, you know, missed some preparation, but uh, the team, you know, kept working, and, and, uh, and then, of course, when those individuals came back, later in the week <coughs> it kind of messed together Saturday night and um, it was a it was a great win for us I don't think it takes anything away from the job that Rocky Pelsa and his staff have done at Mississippi State and I told him after the ball game that uh, you know you can't let one game like it no. during the season and what they've already accomplished and they've got a lot of things going for in Mississippi State and, and they'll continue to do well. You had to be very proud of their defense, <coughs> the way they contained Don Smith. Well, I think that uh, defensively, Phil, we, we played pretty well all year long, and, and um, I was uh, proud of our secondary. We were playing without Tommy Powell, and of course, we got a lot of pressure on Smith. It helped them, and my goodness, it just uh, it was a big night for him. It was a big night. It sure was. And let's go into a happy Auburn dressing room right after the game. <coughs> Everybody's coming together and we're working hard. And, you know, people said we're not being tested, but, you know, hopefully we've got a good team. And if we just keep working, take one game at a time, we're going to be all right. I think you stole one from Brent tonight. It looked like he scored. <laughs> I know me and Brent joke, you know, joke around all the time because he'll work, he'll work, he's a workhorse. He'll get it down to the one and let me get all the glory. <laughs> Yeah, Reggie stole the nothing from him, but that's all right. He on the team, and we'll accept them kind, too. You know, the game plans that we have, you know, Coach Sullivan, Coach Blakeney, Coach um, uh, Woods, you know, everybody, and Coach Callaway, everybody's putting a lot into the offense. And, uh, you know, I think everybody, we've got it together this year. The coaches are, uh, they believe in each other and their, their ideas, and I think that might be the reason. What was the plan on Smith? Well, I don't, I don't think it was anything new that we've been, you know, that we haven't been doing all year. It was just going out there, taking all responsibility, having a good time playing the game, and not just, and if we make a mistake, no, not to get upset about it. Just, just play good football. Andre, did, could you tell that he was getting frustrated? I could tell. Yes, yes. Um, uh, our pounding, our pounding, it took a toll on him, and uh, and uh, I tell. <laughs> He hadn't seen, he hadn't played against uh, us like this. I don't think so. He he got hurt one time, you know, after third quarter, he got right back, you know, got back up, and then next play, he's tough. You got to give him a lot of respect. Of times he was, he was laid down on the ground, you know, after play for a while. I have something to say. To say. I have something to say. <laughs> this is an Oreo cookie, huh? <laughs> yeah, with a chew. <laughs> Y'all uh, mind letting them have that last touchdown? No, we didn't want them to have it. No uh, way. We didn't want them to have it, but uh, it's hard to hold a great team like that the whole game. You guys know that the Auburn team has not won in Florida since 1972. You know that? I didn't know. Yeah, I knew that. We're going to see if we can't change that. 65 degrees, calm weather, 8,000. There's Carl Stevens, coach. You are so right, Phil. Well, 
Uh, the, boy, you talking about some folks having a good time at a football game now. I don't know how many, Fred had, Hardy, six, eight thousand or whatever, but there were some happy Auburn folks in Starkville last night, and we start off and make a couple of first downs, and then kind of stop ourselves. And glad that guy wears a white jersey in this game. Just makes an excellent throw to Scott Bozeman here, and get the ball out past the midfield, and we actually have a. They come with everybody. Yeah, the uh, blitz right here and uh, had a tackle that didn't pick up backside there and, and uh, just got sacked. And they're lucky we didn't fumble the ball right there. But what an important series this is because they <coughs> really were sky high. It sets time. the tone right there. Tracy Rocker hits him in the backfield and there's Kirk Crane and you can see our defense playing with a lot of emotion and enthusiasm and Ken Mark. Oh my. I don't know how many plays Ken made last night, but Ken and Arthur Johnson, Chip Powell and Kevin Porter and, and uh, Alvin Briggs just all played his. Kevin make a nice play right here. Hadler's got uh, sprinter type speed and I think, I think it uh, in the game last night, Smith uh, broke containment one time. Tommy Tommy AG played his finest game last night, uh, Phil, and yeah. we challenged Tommy because that linebacker's at Phil Hardy made a nice block right there for Brent and that's uh you know, Brent makes these four and five yard runs and some of them are more impressive than the long runs he makes. Here's a great play, a great call by Larry Blakeney and the offensive staff to get the ball down in scoring position. It was third and 10 too, big play. <coughs> Brent scores right here and we'll get you mighty close. I guess it's going <laughs> I think he scores. <laughs> I think he scored. I don't know who that was blocking right there. Who was that? That uh, was uh, Yen Coward. Goodness, what a block he had on Franks. <laughs> and uh, look at the offensive line come off the ball. Tamborella and Vincent Jones and Walter Reeves and Jim Thompson and Stacy Searles has got good movement. And we were concerned about running at that big people. And Coach Callaway got mad at me during the week. He said, Coach, you just, he said, let's just wait and see if we can't run out of them. He said, let's don't say we can't till we try. <laughs> and he was right. We could run out of them. <coughs> some big plays, some big plays in the secondary. There's Ken Morris breaking up a pass. There's Reverend Baggett. And there's Tim Jesse on a fine run coming off of a, after a penalty play, I believe, and makes a nice run, gets it out close. And Tim was we have a near de out. disaster right here. Great effort on the part of Jeff Berger getting back on that fumble. Actually, Tim just thought we had called an off-tackle play and we had called a sweep and it just miscommunication that created a fumble. <coughs> Here's Smith throwing to Hadley. So they, they gained some yardage throwing the football last night and, and we're going to give up some yardage throwing. Fine play by, goodness, watch this lick right here. Mm. That was oh, my. Uh, Edward Phillips making the initial hit and Kevin Porter coming up finishing him off. Watch this. Great play by Andre Bruce and... Jerry Kelly coming from behind and you can see Smith's frustration building in this game. <coughs> you just can't operate. Alex Berlin, fair catching the ball at the 12 yard line and this is a, a great play right here. Good block. Walter Reeves. Uh, Stacy Searles. Britt breaks a couple of tackles and then outruns him to the goal line. Longest run at Auburn in what 50 years? Second longest run in, in from scrimmage in history. Yen Cowart kicked the end was out that, there. Was that Yen? Yeah. <coughs> Brent said he uh, didn't didn't want to be caught this week. <laughs> he's been well, caught several times. Brent is uh, you know he's had to pull groin and pull hamstring or tight hamstring. It hadn't been pulled, but. He missed uh, Tuesday with a flu or virus, and, and actually we took him in at half and gave him a, gave him some fluid. And great play by Gary Kelly. Oh, my. And of course, I think Gary again shows some of the frustration on the part of uh, mm -hmm. Smith. And Affected his they, passing, too. They used a lot of different type actions throwing the football, and there's fine coverage by Alvin Briggs <coughs> to try to get away from our pass rush and uh, defensive front. Uh, Brian Smith and Andre Booth. Here's an excellent return, good blocking. Did Alex injure himself? In <coughs> he got a little hit. Mm. And, uh, but he's started. Trey was still a little bit bunged up. And we went with uh, Alex because of experience. And throwing here to Walter Reeves. He just backed over that line for the first <coughs> down. Just took him with him there. 
Here's another first down play. Good block by, I don't know whether Tim Jesse or Tommy Powell. And good run by Tim Jesse again. Jim Thompson. Watch this one. <coughs> Great throw and catch right here on the part of Lawyer Tillman. Just get to where you expect him to make all those plays, and Jeff is throwing the ball deep extremely well right now. Three catches, 74 yards for Tillman. His average is still... Reverse. Excellent play by... Oh, who was that to hand? Was that Brent that handed the ball off? Right, and, right. And uh, right. Scott Bolton and right. tossing it back to Brent here, and he takes it in for the score. Great run. Guys got him and just keeps pulling him. Reggie Ware gets a good block right here, Coach. <coughs> and he makes it. I tell you, you know, the thing, the, all running backs are different. And, and uh, there's something about Brent that every muscle fiber that he has is, goes into running. Mm. Great interception on the part of Chip Powell, and that guy right there is playing in the second level, I can assure you. He's got <laughs> folks down there that's trying to get a little sudden change and <laughs> want some offense or defense and hit him out of bounds and get, put, another 15, yeah. put another 15 yards on him. Here's a, another great catch by Lawyer. <coughs> Protection, considering the blitz and the pressure, and Reggie Ware takes it in to score right before half, and that's yes. mighty big right there because... It allowed us to go in at halftime with momentum and with a big lead. With a with a big lead and that's Reggie's eighth touchdown of the year. He's he's the scoring machine for Auburn. We'll be back yeah. in just a minute. Special university feature on the program this week. Steve Beverly has a look at the great Auburn marching band. the Auburn Marching Band lights up the state. It's uh, like 300 brothers and sisters, and it's, uh, it's, it's really a place for me to, to be a part of Auburn. You may think these 300 marchers spend a lot of time beyond class preparing for a Saturday at Jordan-Hare. Not really. Just an hour every weekday. So the challenge is you have to be good. And not all of these people will pursue music careers, like Katie Worthington, a drum majorette and public relations major. Oh, well, it's great to put your uniform on. I like walking across campus, you know, because you feel so proud just wearing your uniform. Once you've marched to 4,000 songs, it's in your blood. Take John Hamilton, class of 61. Now a successful textile executive in LaGrange, Hamilton was in Auburn's first band to play War Eagle. I guess I must have played it a thousand or more times. And if my wife does not play it at my funeral, then uh, I'm not going. For more information on the Auburn band, write to Dr. Johnny Vinson at the address listed on your screen. This is Steve Beverly reporting. Let me repeat that uh, address. Dr. Johnny Vinson, Auburn Marching Band, 132 Goodwin Music Building. Auburn University 36849. We have to okay. remind the folks about the uh, closed circuit next week. Um, the uh, closed circuit of the Florida game uh, at the Coliseum. 12:30 is the kickoff. Now it'll be on the big screen, and it's they really gonna exciting. Have, they're going to have cheerleaders, and yeah. and uh, I don't know what all, but they'll. Uh, you put that many Auburn folks together, they're going to have a good time. Uh, in the Coliseum, it ought to be a riot. Uh, advance tickets are eight dollars, and at the gate they will be ten dollars. Saturday, you get them at the ticket office. And that's a kind of a familiar looking site with a double deck. It looks a lot like uh, home. Well, the, uh, they start the second half and run the ball back out to, to uh, pass midfield. And you say, oh, <coughs> no. Huh? Kevin Porter saves the touchdown or makes the last tackle or makes the tackle. And he was a safety. And it's a big series for us on offense. Good hit right here, containment. Good oh. lick by Andre Bruce. And mm. <coughs> as Brian Smith. This is where I think Brian was talking about mm -hmm. Smith having the frustration in his eyes and there's Tommy A.G. And <laughs> <laughs> you hear what he said? He said, I love everybody. And he does. <laughs> oh, and and he everybody runs. loves Tommy. This drive, he has 53 yards of it in two Tommy, runs. No, no doubt he's, you know, uh, played a lot better last night. And we got him to football more. And 
sprained his ankle a little bit right here on this play, and we held him out. I think that's going to get back in there one more time. But uh, Tommy Ag is a, uh, is a kind of guy that he does. Every, everybody loves him, and he loves everybody, and has a it's a kind of a routine run for Brent. <laughs> <laughs> right here and goes in with it his seventh touchdown of the year he had three last night i didn't realize he had that many but he has uh coley and ralph and reverend baggett and ron stallworth and kurt crane and right here great play by shan morris he causes a fumble and then gets back on it <laughs> and playing uh, and Alvin free Briggs gives direction. He obviously didn't mind playing free safety, Coach. There's some men right there on that bench, I can tell you that. As Tim Jesse running a little counter play in. You know, again last night we didn't score many points in the second half, and I don't know what this deal right here is, but one of these trying to pick him up or intimidate him or whatever, but I can <laughs> assure you you got you can't. I don't believe you're going to intimidate that guy. <laughs> he's uh, he's really good matured. coverage. He's matured and and uh, Jeff's got enough old street fighter in him to to not be intimidated by anybody. <clears throat> you can see him move the ball a little bit and complete a few passes, but they're going to be surrounded every time they get one caught. And here's a fine interception on Alvin Briggs, and it's uh. Again, look at that. Isn't that fun? <laughs> if, if you don't think it's, it's fun to me and, and just to see these kids loving on each other and having a good time playing and... Oh, close. Alexander's close and you got to keep running. You just always anticipate him going to give you the ball and there's Tommy running outside again and... <coughs> run that play the time we hadn't been running fullback outside any and uh, i'm glad to see us do it last night because get the old boy in the offense well but. we've been running the tailback outside and the fullback inside and we need to do both with each one of them there's another outstanding play by shan morris talk to his father who was there's kevin on the trip. kevin is playing good football and wow gary kelly it on the came ground. hard on the quarterback that time coach. <coughs> boy He's under constant harassment and constant pressure. As Shan Morris and Kurt Crane and Craig Ogletree and Rodney Garner. There's the the Reggie two Slack on the sideline. There's Reggie Ware and Reggie and Vincent Harris are both playing excellent football and James Joseph at tailback playing with there's a good throw and catch, Lawyer Tillman and just, uh, you know, so many of our guys right now are just you know, playing good, solid football. And, and just, there's a great play by Jeff Berger right there. Mm -hmm. That guy had all hands over and he got the ball off to, to uh, James Joseph. And I think you said you put this one in here just to show that you could overthrow lawyers. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> Missed two field goals last night, and it's, I guess that's probably the only fault. And of course, that's the field there where you can see them, the band and the fans, and the, there's Arthur Johnson and all four guys in the second. He catches the ball, and they all surround him. He completed about 150 yards worth of passes, but his rushing was minus that's 18. A great play right there by Edward Phillips, and and uh, Benji Rowland got got his hand in there and caused a fumble. And um, Robert Goff playing well in that nose guard for some. And Porter got him. Jesse and running behind Lee Mark Sellers and, and um, there's Pat Johnson and, and Eric Floyd and Brent Gilbert. And Brent's uh, glad to see him back and playing. That was a completion to Lee Mark, I think. John Hudson and I hope Brad Johnson will get back this week. He's missed a couple of weeks with a with a kneecap injury, and I just uh, hope we can get all of our folks healthy to go to to go to Gainesville. It'll be a big one. They got an outstanding football team. They've had a week of rest for us, and Kerwin Bell will be back, and 
you know, defensively, they are probably the quickest team in our conference, maybe except Alabama. Alabama may be as quick in linebacker, and, mm -hmm. but overall, uh, Florida's got tremendous team speed defensively and offensively. They got the great speed at the wide receivers and a big, biggest offensive line we're going to play against this year. And Coach Kerwin Bell, uh, they'll probably throw it 50 times against us. I don't know. We just, but we've got to have a good plan and a, and a the important thing is is preparation. We can't worry about Florida. They've had that time, the extra time even, to get ready and just right. worry about Auburn and our preparation. We'll be back in just a minute. But you have to go back to the Amazons of 72 to get a win at Florida Field. Great challenge. Well, Phil, you never you never know, but I, if I had to pick a bunch of people I'd want to go to Gainesville with, I like this crowd we're going to Gainesville with. I mean, we may not win the football game. I know they got great athletes and a great football team, and and I know that they'll be on an all-time emotional high, and I know about the Florida fans, and it'll be loud and thing. But uh, it's uh, this crowd that we're going going to take to Florida. They will not. I can assure you, they will not be intimidated, and they'll be excited about playing Florida. And uh, like I said, they're not, they're not, we're not at the point to where we think we're unbeatable, but um, we're, kids are working hard, we're getting great leadership, and they're playing together, and they're, they're showing all of the right signs. We get your tickets to the closed circuit this week at the Auburn Ticket Office, and we'll see you next Sunday with the replay of Auburn, Florida. Thank you. You're watching WSFA Montgomery. Who wants to lead the singing tonight? Huh? Yo. things tonight that we needed to do as far as throwing the football. Um, again, it was, a, it was a big win for us, a mighty important week for us. I don't think that I saw anything out there tonight that would indicate to me that you're ready to throw the towel in on these next two. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review, Jordan Hare Stadium homecoming yesterday where the Tigers thrashed Cincinnati 52 to 7. It was uh, one of those complete games you've been hoping for, Coach. Well, it was, Phil, it's, uh, and this is a great show. People are going to enjoy it because we've got so many shots of the kids in the dressing room on the sideline, on the field, and, and uh, just looking at it, and, and uh, you can sense a feeling that uh, this football team has for each other, and um, I tell all the mamas and daddies that uh, they got a sweet bunch of children and they worked hard and um, I just um, I mean it's it's a this is a special football team feel like we don't know what the, the final analysis is gonna be but I feel good about them as as people and that's the bottom line and that's the thing that's gonna sustain them from now on yeah. <coughs> the Cincinnati game was a big game for us and big week for us coming back from you know, the Florida game, and uh, we worked mighty hard all week long to just try to, to, to try to get closer together as a team and be sure that, that uh, we were ready to, to play Cincinnati. I thought it was important for us to play well, even though, you know, we felt like going in the game that we were going to win the football game, but I didn't just want to win it. I wanted to, <coughs> I wanted us to play well and and do some of the things that it's going to take in the next couple of ball games to 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 be good enough to win, and and I think we got those things done. I think so. Let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of those happy Tigers. 
take them one at a time. The next week we got the Bulldogs, so we'll have a uh, hard week of practice and prepare ourselves like we do every week and uh, look forward to them coming here. You scared us for a minute. What happened? Uh, well, it seemed like on a pass rush, uh, somebody, I got hit in the head somehow. I don't know who hit me or something. Just got hit about right here. And <laughs> next thing I know, Coach Walters out there asking me was all right. Uh, many penalties today, Andre. What was yours for? Um, I think it was for hitting, <laughs> for hitting too hard. <laughs> well, uh, Kevin Porter has not intercepted the ball all year. Every other defensive back on the whole team had intercepted the ball, and his coach had told him that everybody's got one but you, Porter, and finally you got one. But it was a special one, wasn't it? It was. You know, it's been kind of frustrating. I had to keep my head up all year for the rest of the guys because everybody around me has been playing so well. And it's just been a thing that I've had to deal with, but, you know, it finally happened today. And then you took it back for a touchdown, which nobody else had. That's true. Chip had one, took back for a <laughs> touchdown, but they call his back. Yeah, how about that, Chip? Oh, uh, like, I, like these other ones, I'm just running. I, I, don't know how, I don't know how I got in. I don't know what happened. It's just uh, a lot of good blocking, I reckon. And how about yours, though? Guy. You kind of did, did yours in a crowd, didn't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of had my eyes closed, and I just reached up for the ball. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I don't believe that. You believe that. He don't even believe that. <laughs> then the one in the end zone was almost a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. That um, corner, he, he, he didn't draw up as quick as I thought he was. Then he just went. And, uh, and then uh, somebody failed to pick up the linebacker one time. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. They blitzed, and uh, I should have checked out of it, but... Oh, you sent they were going to blitz? Yeah. 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 Well, it's a learning process, isn't it? Yeah. And that opening drive in the third quarter was very, very good for you all. Yes, it was. Um, we went out there, and we scored the first two times we had, and then we got a little sluggish there, but we came back around. Yeah. Hey, uh... Who's this guy here? Does he play for you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's a new one. <laughs> I think he's cooking the barbecue tonight. Don't go. <laughs> don't go. <laughs> How'd the uh, leg feel today? It felt all right. I had a little soreness there when I was trying to cut and go on. But I was just glad to get in run what little they let me run, you know. Just try to get back used to uh, running the football again. Talk to me about your budding career as a quarterback. I think I'm going to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you're cut out of a quarterback? Nah, but if they need me to throw it again, I'd be more than happy to throw it. Got to do a lot of pass blocking today. How'd it go? Oh, it went pretty good, as far as, you know, as, far as I can tell. We'll tell more on the film. That's what we've been doing. You all want to reestablish the passing game this week? Definitely, and uh, Cincinnati brought some uh, a lot of twists, and you know, it was a challenge just to pick up a twist and uh, recognize the things we were doing, but we definitely want to reestablish our passing game. This game seemed like it lasted about three days. <laughs> oh, it really did. Um, offense got out there, kept it a long time, we kept the defense off the field, and plus with TV timeouts and all that, kept the game long. Did you break a sweat? Yeah, I, I played pretty good, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I know insurance. Hey, Harry, how do you like my new car? Hey, you must have called and compared. Nearly one out of three vehicles in Alabama are insured by Farm Bureau. Nice going, Mr. Schmeely. Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Hey, you want to see my new bumper sticker? Call and compare. <laughs> A warm day at Jordan-Hare Stadium for homecoming. ABC television on hand. A lot of old grads. It was a it was a beautiful day. It was warm, but uh, that doesn't bother us. I, as our seniors that were captains for homecoming, it's just an uh, outstanding group of men. We just... Cincinnati has played some outstanding football teams this year and played well against them, and, and I just, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't concerned that they had better people than that we did, but they played awful well against some good folks, and uh, I think that our players were excited about the game and playing the game. I think we start right here, and we, we of course, obviously wanted to throw the football, and <clears throat> Jeff hit Lawyer Tillman. Across the middle for a big game. Tim just had started the game. Brent had missed three days of work last week, and and uh, Tim played well. And uh, I think all our running backs played well in the ball game. And uh, it looked like that the offensive line did some good things. There's a misdirection counter play, and James Joseph. <coughs> 
makes about a seven, eight yard run. We take this one right on down the field and score. Tim makes a nice run right here on the sweep. I tell you, it was a hard hitting football game, Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, Cincinnati will hit you, and of course, that kid's played hard, and Tommy takes it in for the touchdown. Good to see him score. Right, then we take that person right down the field and score after our defense has stopped him in three downs, and, and we all took a seven nothing lead. And Two leaders right there. They, they had uh, two or three great football players on offense. That little tailback is an outstanding player. Ta uh, Taylor, he rushed for, uh, what, 150 yards. Yeah. And big play right here on uh, short yardage play. And, uh, I'm not sure who calls that fumble. Kurt Crane and, and uh, Ron Stallworth and Alvin Briggs came up with the fumble. And <coughs> Brent goes in that tailback on the second series. And he makes a nice run on first down. Comes back in second and short here. And, Throws a halfback pass to Lawyer Tillman for a touchdown. And it's his fifth catch of the year like that. <coughs> <coughs> Lawyer proved that he was human yesterday. He dropped a couple of passes because he made this couple of great catches just like this. And <coughs> his fifth TD reception Coach of the Casey year. Coach Casey to ask Lawyer and Coach Casey talking to Brent on the sideline about now, I'm ashamed to admit it, uh, Phil, but we only had 10 men on the field on this play right oh. here. Our backside end is responsible for that cutback lane. Somehow didn't get out there on the field in the change of possessions. And but watch them hold him here. We do stop them. They get the ball down to the 20-yard line and got a couple of big plays. And it's Third and six Rocker here. And Tracy Rocker, big play. <coughs> Actually caused a fumble there. And and, uh, but that guy got back on it and they end up missing the field goal. We come back on offense, throw the quick screen to Alexander Wright. Good blocking out front. Great block by Stacy Searles. Pick up, I guess, 11 yards on the mm -hmm. play. And we're trying to mix up the running game, throwing out to Vincent Harris. And <coughs> good block out in front by uh, Scott Bolton. And we played everybody in the game yesterday that works to, to play each week, and <coughs> that was a post route to Lawyer, and the safety got back in there and, and uh, made the interception, and uh, fine play by Smokey Hodge, and it's good to get Smokey back, Gary Kelly there, and Robert Goff, and <coughs> you're going to see this guy. He's the slipperest guy I believe I've ever seen. He really has a sense of when to <coughs> avoid the tackler. The interception by Chip Powell. Good blocking. Right here, great blocking. I'm not sure who made that block on the goal line right there. Right? I don't know, okay. Arthur Johnson it was called or, back, or though. Shan Morris, and the touchdown was called back for a clip, and I never saw the clip. Brent breaks two or three tackles and picks up 11 or 12 yards. and. We're in the second quarter now, same drive. Get it down, and Cincinnati stops us, and we miss a field goal, and it's 14 to, to nothing. As the basketball team, I guess they had a scrimmage yesterday, and right. I think we'll have an exciting basketball team again this year. They'll be in Montgomery on Monday at uh, <coughs> AUM at 7 Time play by Alvin Mitchell and Craig Ogletree, and they run the draw, and we get the turnover right here, and uh, was that uh, Russ Carricker caused a fumble and I thought it was Arthur. Uh, Arthur caused a fumble. I, I saw a 40. I couldn't because it might have been Arthur Johnson and and it has Robert Goff and and uh, Russ Carricker and Brian Smith and Smokey and everybody trying to get a piece of it. <coughs> as Brian Smith getting a big old paw up in the way, it's kind of hard to throw over Brian. He's six six. Here they come. As Robert, great effort. Andre on the sack. And uh, Smokey gets in there and helps out a little. And I don't know whether why this guy pulled the ball down and ran, but maybe he thought Kevin was going to oh. And that was uh, kind of a high tackle there, but he didn't get didn't get the face mask. As Mr. and Ms. Ware sitting up there in the stands. And <laughs> Robert got <coughs> long, throwing, strong arm. Throwing to Scott Bolton. Get it down to the seven-yard line, and James Joseph takes it in. 
on his wheat and put that ball down to on the good blocking marker. by offensive line Walter Reeves and got his guy back in the end zone and Stacy Searles and has games and kids playing and having a good time. 21 nothing now. It was a great play by Chip Powell and got that's the way pass defense ought to be played. Looks like he got too many men on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent play. Look, I, I believe that was that Kevin Porter. Mm -hmm. And uh, had some more mamas and I believe that was Lawyer Tillman's family. As uh, throwing to Vincent Harris and he's got five balls this year. This is a great, great catch right here. I, I believe that that might be the best catch we've had all year long. I, and I know lawyers made some great ones, but but Scott Bolton must have been six feet in the air and came down with that thing and got a foot foot down before going out of bounds. Come on, say hi to <coughs> Coach Casey and Brent. I'd like to hear that conversation now. <laughs> <laughs> oh me, Brian Smith. Brian had some big plays in the game yesterday and comes right back with another one here and on a screen pass and uh, Brian is getting better each week and we had to fight through blockers to make that play. Here's a great interception here on the part of Alvin Briggs. A double pass and Alvin just goes back in and gets a good coverage. Carlo Cheatham was back there and Chip Powell and Kevin and he played six, seven guys in the secondary yesterday and his Coach Dennis is, has really got those guys playing well back there. And his fifth of the year, he and <coughs> leading the league in interceptions. On the draw to Brent and I don't know how many yards he makes that, 16, 18 or something and I'm back on the sweep again and Mercy, that is moving. Well, I think that uh, the offensive line and backs and all the blocking well and the execution overall. This is a great execution on the part of the reverse here. Jeff Berger gets him in the end zone right there with that last block. Who was the, who was the other one blocking uh, downfield there? Didn't pick it up, Coach. Uh, Jim Thompson. And Scott Bolton, second. 50 years ago, Benny Goodman was the king of swing. Haircuts were a quarter, and there was an alumni group that was honored yesterday, their golden anniversary. Steve <coughs> Beverly has the report from Alton. <laughs> 1936. A new black Ford cost $700, and you could fill up that car for 20 cents a gallon. In Auburn, the Pitts Hotel was going up, and Olin Hill started selling men's clothes. But this was the Depression, and you couldn't buy much. If you could afford college, you were lucky, and Bill McTeer was one of those lucky ones. Head cheerleader and campus leader extraordinaire in the class of 36. The years since have seen a change in both Auburn and Bill's. He's been successful in the furniture business in Birmingham, but he remembers he survived even when the times weren't so good. I had a job waiting on tables at the attorney house, and I cleaned test tubes at the chemical laboratory on off time, and I even worked in Tuma drugstore. And I was able to come out pretty good, but... Jane Slack reigned over homecoming as queen in 1936, and the tradition has continued this year with the crowning of Shelly Murphy, a sophomore from Clearwater, Florida, at Saturday's game. <laughs> Today, of course, you've got all these beautiful girls and uh, maybe 15 or 20, and they are really talented. We had much less talent than they do today, I, I'm sure of that. Not bad for a guy who can still fit into his old A-Club sweater. From Auburn, this is Steve Beverly reporting. Older than me, I was junior senior year. Another group uh, was special there uh, yesterday, the uh, Bacardi Bowl team. The team of 36 went to the first. Is that right? First well, you know, Whoopa Lee. Every, a lot of Auburn people know Whoopi Lee lives in Newland, Georgia. He has yeah. seen every, he might be the only man alive that's seen every Auburn bowl game. He was there. He, he was, was a cheerleader. There. I don't know if he's a cheerleader then. He was. Yes, he was. was the, we start the second half throwing and running, and we take it down and score. This is, had some things that we wanted to establish yesterday, and playing in the second half was one of them. <coughs> Fine throw and catch to Frank Thomas. Brent again on the sweep. Gets up inside. And 
And Stacy, the Searles again, Vincent Harris. It's like... He only quits churning when the ground makes him stop. You know, mm -hmm. he's just got a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <clears throat> Great run right here by Tim Jesse, getting it on down close to the goal line. Thought Larry Blakeney did an excellent job of calling plays yesterday. He and Coach Sullivan and Coach Woods and Neil Calloway and James Daniels and Jay Jacobs and Bud Casey, our offensive staff. It's I've had a lot of fun being involved in the in the offense more this year, and I can't take any credit for it, but I can say that I do know what's going on. <laughs> <coughs> Fine play by Craig Staples, Quentin Riggins. Look out, that big boy! <laughs> yeah, Benj has got him, and Kurt Crane, and just. Uh, kids are playing. I want you to watch this thing right here. Get up off the ground, Stacy. He's got your pin. <laughs> That's from Saturday Night <laughs> Live wrestling there. The, uh, he finally comes back and does get him, but not before he completes the pass for a seven, eight yard gain, and I don't know about that. That's mm -hmm. just playing hard in my book. Again, he's, look, look at that. <clears throat> I, th I guess we got a three-man rush on, and I guess uh, he knows how to protect himself. <coughs> well, it's just hard to get your hand oh, on that. One from the behind, <laughs> backside right there. <laughs> I believe that's Nate Hill. Good play by Russ Carica. They come up with an excellent play here to flip screen and, and uh, take it down to the three-yard line. And I don't know, we just... Look, 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 look at him holding, holding Gary Kelly right there. Nearly pulled him to the ground. I was wondering, what, now we were slanting this away, and I said, hi in the world. There's Andre's lady friend right there. That, uh, there's a nice pass from Reggie Slack to, to Duke Donaldson. Reggie comes back and makes a nice, another nice throw in the middle to Lawyer, and he has a fine arm. He's, uh, well, he makes a big play, takes it down to, what, the 15-yard line and mm -hmm. gets stalled here and kicks the field goal, make it 38-7. <clears throat> There's Tommy A.G. and a couple of buddies. I believe that's... It may have been one Coach of those guys Cox, with Coach a... Cox and Coach Whit's little boys. You don't reckon that was one with a mask on in the dressing room? I could have been. <laughs> And he is back here, and Kurt Crane, and, and uh, causes a fumble, and Andre comes up with it. And <coughs> that's the offensive line. They kind of laid back right now, aren't they? <laughs> right. And Brent, he didn't see much of that 95 yesterday. He played. No, he, he, <laughs> he, he was a great player coming in. He was a good block by Vincent Jones. And Look at this. Mm -hmm. they, uh, it doesn't look quite so violent, slowed down. As Reggie Ware taking it in from the one. Hold another one. Makes it 45 to 7. His 10th touchdown and, uh, of the year. Boy, that was a great picture, wasn't it? Yeah. Gary Kelly comes in. We finally put him on the ground. Until we had a barbecue and had all the families back and mamas and daddies. And as uh, Andre making a big hit and a big play, and that's where they said the penalizing for hitting too hard. And I don't know. I just... It was a great play on the part of Kevin Porter, and, you know, it's strange that uh, that's his first interception of the year. And He's been on him about the it. The other halfback, to just show you how much they're going away from Kevin now, the other halfback that, that uh, Chip Powell and Alvin Briggs alternate on, both, they've intercepted 10 passes on that side because they're throwing away from that guy. Now, that's the reason they're throwing away from him, and uh -huh. he's not getting the opportunities that, the, that uh, Chip and Alvin are. <laughs> so, uh, but I can hear him telling them, but I took mine back for a touchdown. <clears throat> well, that's <laughs> not the first one he's taken back. as the defensive front. And, Coach Hall's babies and Coach Heron, I know that he and Steve Dennis, and they're all proud of the defensive football team because they turned the ball over six times to the offense yesterday, and offense took advantage of it, and it was a, it was a big win for us, and uh, I think more than just the win, it was coming back and, and, and feeling good about ourselves and, 
and getting ready for these last two football games. We'll be back in just... <laughs> And with that, Pat Dye's Auburn Tigers had beaten Ray Perkins' Crimson Tide 21 to 17. It was Perkins who went first to face the gathered media in the post-game locker room after his second loss to Auburn. All the Auburn fans out there, congratulations to you too. I know I'm going to hear a lot of War Eagles over the next 364 days. <clears throat> I'll just swallow it. Let's go along. That's the way it is. That's the way it's supposed to be. But it was Dye who took the stand as the victorious coach at Legion Field and took the opportunity to air things out. I really hesitate to even say anything about the fact that the comment that Ray made that, uh, that uh, the game doesn't mean as much to me as it does to him. Uh, like I said last week, I don't know how you measure that. But I'd, I'd find it awful hard to believe that that game out there tonight meant more to him than it did to me. And I'd find it awful hard to believe that he loves his players more than I love mine and care for them. Both teams are headed for bowl games. Auburn plays in the Citrus Bowl New Year's Day against Southern Cal, while the Tide will spend the Christmas holiday in El Paso, Texas. The Washington Huskies come in with a record of 8-2-1. and one. The Troy State Trojans... Yesterday's Iron Bowl, everything pointed to yet another Auburn-Alabama showdown that would be settled in the final minute of the game. In the first half, the Tigers missed on two scoring opportunities inside Alabama's 20-yard line. But that was balanced out when the Crimson Tide also failed to produce precious points in the second half, deep in Tiger territory. The first half featured the brilliant running of Bama's Bobby Humphrey and Auburn's Brent Fullwood. Humphrey ripped off 172 yards on 16 carries in the first half alone, setting up Mike Shula's first touchdown pass to Angelo Stafford and caught another Shula toss in the second quarter. Fullwood ended the day with 145 yards and two touchdowns. He was aided by the Tigers' effective passing game. We knew we had to throw the football to open the running game up. At times, you know, throwing the football was the only thing that we had going for us, and uh, everybody did a good job. I didn't get pressure but a couple of times. I made some mistakes. I threw it up a couple of times. And, uh, I don't know how many yards we would have, but he had some great runs. He hit, he hit a free throw several times, and that was we felt like that was a big key in the game. And I felt like from an offensive standpoint, we couldn't make any mistakes, and we had to be able to run the football. But there again, I don't know how effective we were overall, but I think we ran it pretty good at times in spots. Many football games are decided in the first five minutes of the second half. Auburn, down 14-7 at the half, promptly came out on their first two possessions of the third quarter and threw an interception and then fumbled the ball. But the Tide could only manage three points, their only points of the second half. If you'd have told me we were going to turn it over four times and they were going to turn it over once, I'd say... There's no way we could win the football game, but uh, sometimes those things happen. A black cloud that seemed to hover over the Tigers through two and a half quarters broke in the third when Bama linebacker Wayne Davis was called for a late hit on this screen pass to Tim Jesse. The penalty gave Auburn a big first down, which later turned into a 26-yard touchdown run by Fullwood. Now, we've got a rule in the SEC. It's called ethics rule that we won't talk about officiating, it's a good thing we got that rule, too. <laughs> Go 
Alabama nursed a 10-point lead throughout the third quarter, but Brent Fullwood's early fourth-quarter touchdown run turned this into another down-to-the-wire Iron Bowl barn burner. This 51st Iron Bowl came down to the final two minutes and 18 seconds. Auburn was staring at a fourth and three at the Bama 49-yard line. If the tide could hold, they could have iced their third straight win over Auburn. But Jeff Berger connected with senior Trey Gaines for a nine-yard gain, a crucial first down, one of many crucial big plays in this one. Trey actually went, he didn't, he didn't run the route right. He ran behind the tight end, and he, I guess he couldn't get underneath him, so he ran behind him, but he still beat his, beat his guy. I, I think he beat Robinson, didn't he? 21. Robinson, I mean, he had good coverage on him, and Jeff threw it the only place he could throw it and get it caught, and Trey caught it. Coach Dye said you probably ran the route wrong, but you got to the right place. Yeah, I, I didn't, uh, you know, it was supposed to be a pick play, and, and uh, I ran behind the tight end, or ran over him instead of under him. I felt like he didn't get there quite quick enough. I was probably there quick myself, and, uh, you know, but Jeff still made a good throw, and uh, I was the only one that could have caught it, you know, and, uh, you know, fortunately I did. The Tigers ran it down to the Bama 7. Now, with under a minute to play, Pat Dye and his staff called for a reverse and wanted a timeout to get Scott Bolton in the game to run the play. That's when things got hairy. Coach Dye was calling timeout. I looked over there towards the sideline, and he was jumping up and down trying to get me to call timeout. But, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, Jeff had already started the snap count, and I had to just come in there and do our part. Well, we were looking for a way to try to get it in the end zone. And we wasn't doing too good going this way, so I figured if we started this way and came back, we'd get it in. No looking back now. Berger got the snap, and the reverse was going to Tillman. The big guy came around the left end, got key blocks from A.G. and Reeves, and found pay dirt. Last year, the hero was Van Tiffin. This year, Lawyer Tillman. He just lined up and tried to execute as well as we could, and they executed better on that play, and as a result, they scored the touchdown. Well, we got guys over there. It's just a matter of the guy does a great job of running, and they have a couple blockers in front of it, and they, you know, make a good run and, uh, and get it in for the touchdown. It's just a matter of them executing and us not being able to, to make the play on it, Jimmy. It's just that simple. When all the chips was on the table at the fourth quarter and we had to stop them, we stopped them when we got the ball back. And then when we had to take it and drive it, our offense did what they had to do to take it to make to the field and score and, and, and win the ball game. There comes a point in time when you got to, you got to trust your quarterback. And the one gamble that we, that we made is we put the game in his hands. And uh, that, uh, to be honest with you, that, uh, that was what we did. And until the last 32 seconds, you know, it hadn't worked. But the final analysis, it was the right thing to do. Thank you, Coach. I'll see you. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is over the... Two weeks prior to yesterday's Iron Bowl, the pregame hype was enormous. The majority of the pregame predictions noted the game would again be won in the waning moments. The two coaches agreed. Ray Perkins believes this is the biggest game in the world, while Pat Dye noted his desire to win, but a loss would not crush him. Until after you've lost a big game like the Auburn game today, the biggest. You know, you have a feeling in the dressing room, and I'm sure that they do. If they're not careful, they lose the, they lose sight of some of the things that they've accomplished during the year, which were, which were pretty doggone good. And I also told them that, not to do that. That would be wrong. I really hesitate to even say anything about the fact that the comment that Ray made that uh, that uh, the game doesn't mean as much to me as it does. The Auburn Football Review is Bill Snow. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review in uh, just another typical Auburn-Alabama game. The Tigers came from behind in the fourth quarter and won 21 to 17. Typical because the last five have been that way, Coach. Well, it was exactly like I expected it to be. It came down to the last minute of the game to, to you know, to decide it. And, um, Last year, the shoe was on the other foot. This year, it's 
on our foot. <laughs> uh, I've got, uh, it, it was really a, a, a numbering experience to me, and, and this football team this year has been special in a lot of different ways, but mainly because of the quality of the people on the team. And uh, we'd worked extremely hard to have a football team, and we'd fallen short in two of the biggest games of the year, and um, I was mighty happy for them. And our coaching staff and, you know, the people who worked so hard to make a night like last night possible. Um, I think, again, it was a typical Auburn Alabama game, and uh, we've had some great ones over the last, I guess, the last six years. Every, last every one of them have been classic football games, and um, a lot of credit uh, needs to go to Alabama because that kid played extremely hard, just like I was did, and the ball could have bounced either way, you know, and like it did last year, yeah. it made a difference in the ball game. Um, and I've gone on record as saying that I hope that. The Auburn people and the Alabama people will not be bitter towards each other, and uh, because I think that you know the the game's over with now, and uh, the Auburn people, uh, you know, we won, and we can have that that inner satisfaction for a year, but I don't think it helps any to rub it in, or you know what I mean. Well said, so, coach. Well said. Now, we have a remarkable tape sequence here to show you today. We begin with that fourth down and three play on the last touchdown drive that won the game, that fourth down and three where Berger passes to Trey Gaines and saves the drive, and then the three plays that, uh, for the score. Then those four exciting, dramatic plays to stop Alabama with the 32 seconds to go. And let's begin now and show you that plus the dressing room scene. Think what you learned from tonight. Do you remember 
It ain't over <laughs> till it's over. You just keep on keeping on, and you keep on keeping on. And you don't damn little old quarterback throw two interceptions down in the end zone. But when it was fourth and three, and we had it. I'm going to tell you something now. It's just going to be awful easy for you to get swallowed up in all of the damn praise and the glory that you're going to get. I'm going to tell you something. That's a, and, 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 and take that and enjoy it. Use it in the right perspective. Praise your teammates and your opponents and whatever. And everybody in here had a part in it. I'm mighty proud of our coaches. I will tell you what, the way they run up down the damn field out there tonight, it sounds it's been over easy for us to give up on you. But we hung in there, we fought you there. And we come back and stopped them when we had to stop them. And we took the dang thing home. Uh, precious moments, Pat Dye, precious moments. Well, you know, I just, re I really just soon those shots of me not been in there because, I mean, it was an emotional game and <laughs> it was emotional in the dressing room after the game and, uh, but we've got an awful lot to be thankful for. Uh, Phil, it's a, like I said, it's a, it's a numbling feeling when it's you get right there. It is. It's been a tough year in a lot of different ways, but got a lot of uh, got a lot of people to to thank. Uh, I can start with Sue and the kids. They've been. Y'all got so excited you went out and got a pizza last night. Or something. <laughs> well, I, I had I had I had pre-planned what I was going to do: win, lose, or draw. I I I, I told Sue I'm coming home. I, I'm not going to wallow in the glory and and go out and celebrate in Birmingham if we won, and I was not going out if we lost. I was coming home because I had to, I had some thinking that I wanted to do myself. And so soon I came home to Auburn and flew into the airport and got in my car and drove by Tumor's Corner. All the toilet paper was wet. <laughs> went down the streets and, and uh, to Godfather's and got a pizza. <laughs> All right. And then went home. Well, that's a good time to thank your sponsors. <laughs> We would like to thank uh, Mike Carter and uh, Godfather's Pizza, Joe Brady and Snapper Moores, Phil Richardson and Goodwin Mark with Farm Bureau, Willie Moses and Bill Hitchcock with Coca-Cola, and Mr. Bobby Lauder at Colonial Bank. And uh, we deeply appreciate your support and sponsorship. We couldn't have a program without you. We'll be back in just a minute. We didn't think anybody stayed away because of the rain. Well, it was a uh, it was a nice day for football. Really, it was cool and a little mist falling, but it wasn't enough to hurt him. But I want to tell you something. Uh, there's a guy right there that knows how to play the game. He's I'm good. telling you, he is a great football player. Great effort on the part of Shan Morris out there to save a touchdown. And he, Alabama, he did we had I think we had stopped Alabama maybe once or mm -hmm. twice, and we'd move the ball a little bit, and of course they take this one in. And Bobby's got great leg strength and as fine an eyesight as any running back that I've ever seen. And he just, and of course, Alabama's offensive line is by far the best that we've played against all year long. Bow up down here some, but, but they <coughs> score on the third try. I'll tell you, Phil, in, in, in times during the game last night, I guess it, it, that, uh, that we played really well defensively and uh, had some big series is where we stopped Alabama, particularly when we had to get the ball back in the fourth quarter. Right. And, uh, of course, there's a guy right there that knows something about running it also. Boy, what a game. He just great run, and I don't know, he's just, uh, he's got the acceleration, got the, he, he has got the great eyesight also. And you came back and answered on this first drive, which is very important. <coughs> I think we established the fact that we were going to move the football the first time we had it. And it probably was a signal to Alabama that we were going to throw the football. Uh, we had just gone into the game, and we were going to throw it and throw it and throw it. And, and just we didn't feel like we were a good enough football team just lined up and run it on Alabama. And we felt like that with the kind of athletes they got in the secondary at linebacker, 
that uh, we were probably going to turn the ball over some and throw interceptions, but uh, there's another, well, that's for the touchdown right there, the first play of the second quarter, and 18 yard great run. run and blocking here, Walter Reeves and, and uh, Tommy A.G. and uh, Jim Fuller, and there's uh, Stacy Dunn, and Stacy uh, Searles, and just, there he goes again. All right, now this is their touchdown drive to uh, go ahead 14 -7. Right, they, they take it, and they're kind of methodical with it. They run the draw, run the sweep, just, but they run it. Uh, I'm just so proud of our secondary. Uh, feel that your Jim Mars got hurt and as a pick route. I'm going to cut that out and send it to Mr. <laughs> Pedersen. <laughs> <laughs> oh me but anyway there's a guy right there that you know has is, is given Alabama a lot of thrills to them 11 this is a drive where they were trying to take a this big, is a big this is a big big series right, right here because we do stop them before the almost fumble that ball there I wish we had wish we had a we'd have had a chance to get a score uh, tackled by Kurt Crane I don't know how many tackles Kurt made last night he must have made player two dozen but here's the here's play. a great interception Kevin Porter, I believe Jalen Briggs would have intercepted it if Kevin Handler, uh, Kevin Handler, but it was a big play right before the half, and, and it took any momentum that Alabama would have gone in half with away from them, and that was very, very important. And, uh, of course, I mentioned to our squad at halftime, I said the last time that we won the game in Birmingham, we were behind 16 to 10 at halftime, and uh, I felt good at half. Uh, I knew that we had to stop Alabama from running football, and I knew that we had to 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 do it in the third quarter. And uh, of course, we come out and we turn the ball over twice in the third quarter, and uh, and moved it and stopped them. We didn't get really get into the game until the fourth quarter. We'll talk about that in a minute. Right after this, blood supplies continue to be critically low across uh, at at blood centers. Auburn University is a great university, and there's a lot of support back and well, forth with the program. Well, anytime, anytime something like this happens, or uh, you you just you just thankful for the people that surround you because you're not any better than the people around you. And I can start a, again with my wife and family, Sue and Wanda, that's at home now. Uh, our coaching staff and their wives uh, have been tremendous throughout the year. Uh, Dr. Martin and the Board of Trustees and the administration for their help and support of the entire athletic department and Auburn Athletics. And the faculty and the students that support our program, uh, Auburn fans and uh, people that are in Auburn. Uh, and Bobby Baggett, oh, yeah. our chaplain, a yeah. uh, close friend of mine. It means so much to our players and our football team and our football program. The players and their families that uh, are so close to all of us. And the walk-ons and the scout teams that don't get to go out there and play every Saturday, but they are certainly instrumental in, in us being able to play on, on Saturday and helping us prepare every week. They give a lot. You're right. <clears throat> the, uh, the GAs, the graduate assistants that uh, work so hard and don't get any recognition or credit, they've done a tremendous job for us this year. Uh, my administrative staff, and I know we're into the ball game, Phil, mm -hmm. uh, but David Housel and Kermit Perry and Buddy Davison and Bill Beckwith and all that, uh, plus all the secretaries and everybody, they're all part of it. Mm -hmm. Two turnovers here, but they <coughs> held them to just three points. This is a critical part of the game right in here. It made me cough, Phil. <laughs> well, we're coming back, and this is another turnover right there. Great hit on the part of Kermit Kendrick. i tell you what, he's a great football player. And Looks like he was playing hurt last night, but uh, we turn it over, but the defense does that job. They don't let them get anything but a field goal out of it. And big play by Benji Rowland and Tracy Rocker and, and uh, Brian Smith and good coverage there. I believe that's Andre Bruce. And as Kurt Crane, like I said, had a lot of tackles. Uh, Edward Phillips, Arthur Johnson made a lot of plays last night. Kevin Porter. Uh, you're going to see late in the game, or you've already seen where Chip Powell, they tried to go to him twice on those last four plays of the ball game and knocked both of them down. People have been trying to pick on it <coughs> all year. And fine run by Tim Jessup. Tommy Powell, uh, Tommy Agee played uh, good last night. 
This is the drive late in the third quarter that Auburn scored on the first play of the fourth quarter. That the, uh, <clears throat> we, our coaching staff, Coach Blakeman, Callaway, and Casey, and Sullivan, and Daniels, and Jay Jacobs, they had an excellent game playing for Alabama, and they stuck to it and did a great job with it. Here's the touchdown. Outstanding <laughs> run by, by Brent. I tell you, those running backs last night, both of them took a physical beating, and they sure did. They just Alabama just got great athletes, and they know how to play the game, and the high folks will get after you pretty good, and it's uh, you can just see they take some tremendous hits. Here's a play and a big play in the ball game right here. Right here, you can see Richardson push Powell in the back right as he goes in the end zone, and Arthur Johnson's calling it for him, and but they get the clipping penalty, and it was a big, big play in the game. Good play, great play by Kurt Crane. <clears throat> a little pressure here. Alabama did a lot of things different against us that they hadn't done as a smart play right there by Andre Bruce. He kind of nudged him out of bounds, but he didn't get the penalty. And, I, and, and I, I promise you, when Van Tiffin missed that field goal, I said, something good's going to happen to us. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I felt that way all along going into the game. If we could just hang in there and hang in there, I knew, again, what kind of character we had on the football team and the quality of the people that uh, were playing and... You know, we, we've had two disappointing losses, and, and, you know, I can't, I really don't have the explanation why somewhere I didn't get the job done, but I knew that uh, I'd lived with them for a year, and it was a great play by Jeff Berger and throw to Lawyer Tillman, and Kermit Kendrick comes up with another big play. <coughs> the defense has got to hold them again. But it, and it does. I think it's Benji Rowland, Kevin Porter. Tracy Rocker, Kurt Crane, go on and on. Nate Hill comes with a big play right there. As a fourth and a third and seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. Third and seven. This is starting a touchdown drive, I believe, here that, right. that wins the ball game. And of course, there was some critical plays in. This is one right here, a fourth down play, a third down play. Third Brent and makes, five, and he runs for the first. Makes a first down on a draw play. Second and nine here. Jeff just standing in there. And Third pours, and three coming. Pours and calls and actually, if, if that was a that was a good call, and we'd have had uh, fourth and three. And this is this we've worked on this play since day one for that opportunity to use it, and and they executed it to perfection. Trey made an unbelievable catch, and, and Jeff actually made a great throw. On it. Um, I asked Brent if he thought he'd score. He said, I think I'm going to score every time I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I had his kind of ability, I guess I would, too. <laughs> As Tommy uh, A.G. running down hard inside. Got it down inside the 10. And we did have some confusion right here. We didn't have any confusion as to what we wanted to call. But actually, that's the first time that Lawyer Tillman's run the reverse all year long. Looked like we probably ought to use him more often. <laughs> but... Uh, Really wanted to get Scott Bolton in the ball game because Scott's been our number one reverse. And Alabama was, at this point in time in the game, they were tired, and and we were too. Both sides were tired. And remembering last year, this was and a tension-filled time right here. Coach. Right. Great play by Arthur Johnson. Trying to, Shula trying to hit uh, Bale. And go to Chip Powell against Richardson, and I guess Richardson's probably <laughs> run faster backwards than Powell can forward, but he didn't get behind him. Chip makes a great play, and uh, Andre Bruce runs Shula out of bounds. Six seconds to go now. Fourth and play. one. And again, they go to Chip's side, and you're going to see him knock this one down. I saw Coach Powell in the, is Chip's father, last night in the dressing room, and, and <laughs> Outside of me, he might have been the happiest <laughs> yeah, guy there. Yeah, yeah. But it was, a, it was a big win, and it was an emotional football game, just like every one of them has been. Uh, one that the ball could have bounced either way. You know, just, uh, just as I've mentioned, it's happened in the last two games. The last two games before last night went the other way, and this one fell our way, and we're very thankful for it. We'll be back in just a minute.
Any good oil well, such professionals, Vic Irving, our cameraman, Floyd Dozier, our main cameraman, Harold Izell, our editor, and Harold White, our engineer, and Judd Wilt, who helps us. And then Arlen Carr, our director, and his uh, folks here in studio, Bill Ford, Granitha Baldwin, Ken Moore, Butch Geyer, Richard Walker, Bruce Thomas, the engineers, Dave Bradley, Roland Townley, Steve Cohn. Well, they, all, they are all Phil, fans, Coach. Phil, I'd like to thank you because I really, I thoroughly enjoy the show and I enjoy doing the show. And well, we there's no doubt too. that... that you all do the best job of any coaching show that I know of, and I'm just, I just show up on Sunday morning and cough and gag and whatever. And <laughs> you got 20 out. seconds to get <clears throat> to the Citrus Bowl. Well, we, we're playing an outstanding Southern Cal football team, and we're looking forward to going, and I'm looking forward to getting on the road and recruiting a little bit in the next week or so. Okay, and we'll see you next year on the Auburn Football Review. End, end of the season. Last three or four or five ball games, they're real good. Oh, that's I mean, that's, that's great running ability there. I mean, that's great vision and cutting ability and desire to, to make yards. Here's a big third down play here. Mike Shuler does a super job yeah, turning it upfield and just doing what he has to do to get it just past that, that stake over there, that first down stake. <clears throat> Mike did a real good job in the second half of getting us out of would be not real good plays because of the way the defense lined up and into better plays. Here's a little draw play to Bobby Humphrey. See him make that guy miss there? I mean, he just got great movement and, and great running ability and, and the vision to go along with it. He's got great feet uh, uh, in the hole. I really felt like we had a lot of opportunities yesterday. We did. We had our opportunities. Hey, we can't, you know. uh, uh, we can't cry in our milk. We had opportunities <clears throat> to to score and we get it in a position to score and uh, we had uh, we got it down to the four yard line one time we got a penalty call that back you know we had seven penalties for 72 yards and that's something that we had some of early in the season and we uh, and we could overcome them but you can't overcome them against good football teams like Auburn right. and uh, or you have a have have a lot of difficulty a lot, a lot tougher yeah <clears throat> You have to be a, a far superior team to overcome uh, uh, those type mistakes and those type tones. And you just you just can't expect it. <clears throat> and we knew that going in. Well, that ought to lay to rest. The uh, There's a little play action pass by Berger here. Oh, great interception! Great interception. The defense turns the ball over four times, puts it in great field position twice, and I think we come out with three points. Out of, out of the turnovers, you know. Uh, you got to be able to take uh, take a little bit more charge and have a little bit more of a killer instinct type uh, type attitude and, and do what it takes to get it in the end zone in those situations and take advantage of those type, those type opportunities when your defense turns the ball over for you. Well, I was saying earlier, that ought to lay to rest any idea that I've heard all year about Auburn having their easy schedule. You know, that really doesn't make any difference. I they came and then played a tough know, ball game. I don't know who talks about schedules uh, and all you that. Know. You know, if you play games, you <coughs> play games. And, That's uh, right. If you win nine games or eight games or ten games or eleven games, you've had a great it really year. doesn't matter who you're playing. You know, in, in Division One football, uh, you play in games. And, uh, Everybody's competitive. That's exactly right. Here's, uh, here's just before the half. Just for a field goal there. It's not just for the half. That's after. That's in the third, third quarter. quarter. That really scared me to death there. I didn't think that. I didn't think that ball went in. <laughs> we were real slow getting somebody on the field yeah. there. That's right. And uh, uh, almost ran out of time. And he kicked it. Kicked it right on through anyway. Let's pull wood again. That's Kurt Jarvis on the play. <clears throat> I think Kurt must have played uh, played really well. There's Ricky Thomas. I tell you, it's. It didn't dawn on me till about the middle of last week. Here's Doug Allen running real hard, picking up about nine yards on that play. I'm gonna toss it to him here. It didn't dawn on me till about the middle of last week that we're gonna have all them Hoss Johnsons and them Kurt Jarvis's and Cornelius Bennett's and Ricky Thomas's and Chris Goods and all those guys, all those seniors, you know, some 20, 21, 22 mm -hmm. seniors that they're going to be leaving us this year. And that's your It really didn't dawn on me until last week, you know, about the middle of the week. And uh, I'm really going to hate to see them go for a lot of reasons. 
You know, they've gone through a lot over four years, and I couldn't be any more proud. I can't think of any any other group of people having gone through as many things as they've gone through, and gone through it just so extremely well, and with a lot of character and a lot of class. And uh, well, they're going to be special duly group. Missed. That's your yeah, group yeah. too. Your first well, group. Well, I don't like to say my group, but it, it's our group. Right. We're all in it together, and it's our group. But uh, uh, they are special. They're very special to me. We'll be back and take a look at fourth quarter action in just one moment. With Alabama leading Auburn 17-14, we begin the fourth quarter of play at Legion Field. I tell you, every every game uh, since we've been back, the last four of these games anyway, the fourth quarter has loomed uh, to be the big quarter. And that's where the that's where the game's been been won or lost pretty much in this fourth uh, in this fourth quarter. It's good uh, good run by Bobby Humphrey there. It's certainly no <coughs> place for the faint hearted in this no, fourth quarter. Sure I'll is. tell you what, it's, it's been sure some it's hard. Real good run, uh, real good run by Doug Allen. No, it's not a it's not a place for the faint hearted. This game, period, not just the fourth quarter, but any that's part right. of it. Here's another good run by Doug Allen. I guarantee you, he's not faint hearted. I zeroed on him a few times yesterday. He not only ran well, he blocked. Mm -hmm. He did a great job. Here's a great run by Gene Jelt. Great run down to the four yard line, just to be uh, just to be partially nullified by a uh, clipping penalty. One of those mistakes that that there's John Fru Morgan holding him up. It's good to see old John getting. Getting excited there. Uh, John's filling in for Larry Rose. Here's a big play here, and I guarantee you nobody mm. wanted to catch it any more than Greg Richards. I know how Greg feels. I really do. But I think John John Frumorgan had to play, play pretty good for us. And uh, I was really, really happy to see him get excited there uh, in the end zone. Uh, we tried to settle for a field goal here after a couple of mistakes that, that bog us down. And, uh, you won't see that it. very often. You don't see that very often at all. <laughs> sure don't. Uh, being uh, and missing field goal, you don't see that at all. Here's a well-executed play here. Great executed sideline pass. Had to be a perfect throw, <clears> too. <throat> sure did. Tell you, Berger, the, like I said during the week last week, Berger has come on uh, real well uh, the last uh, three or four games as far as throwing the ball, looking looking at his receivers downfield and finding them, getting them to them. Uh, we felt like he was going to complete some passes, but we wanted him to complete them in front of us which I thought our defense did a real good job of doing that. There was one of those cases right there where they're coming in there hitting full wood, but they're holding him up and uh, not trying to slap him down the ground or anything. Here's the longest pass play of the game, uh, 22 yards to Lawyer Tillman there, which was a big play. Here I thought we had a chance, had another chance. Had three chances. <laughs> bounces, bounces in there pretty good. Hey, it's uh, something's got to happen our way here in a few minutes is what I'm thinking on the sideline, you know. <clears throat> but here we go. A little nice pass in there, he cranks it up again, bounces, and it does go our way. But uh, Kermit Kendrick's back there making it go our way and just does a, does a great job there making the interception. <clears throat> now we got it backed up way down at the four-yard line. We've got to get it out of the hole. Here comes Doug Allen. And here's here's where I felt like we needed to really put a drive on. Uh, a combination of two things, put a drive on each clock up and score and get some points out at the same right. time. <clears throat> this is uh, right here is where we where we could have done it and uh, and did missed on picking up a big third down play and that gave me a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> fumbled the uh, fumbled the ball there on the snap. Get him down. That's the way Carlos Robinson. He's a guy you don't hear too much from, but he's a solid football player and a real good contributor to our football team. Good play by Wayne Davis. I think Wayne yeah. had a good game. He had a real good game. Sure did. There's Kurt Jarvis. There's Derek Slaughter, both seniors, uh, along with Cornelius. Uh, I think our defense did a great job stopping that number 22 in the second well, half, too. Uh, for the most part. For the you most know, part. He had a, he he had, had a steam he had a few that hurt us. A couple of times there. But, uh, hey, great running backs. You're not going to stop them. No. You know, you slow them down and you contain them and try to keep them down, but uh, uh, it's just like their defense. They didn't stop Bobby Humphrey from gaining 200, 208 yards, you know. But uh, those are statistics. You know, the big thing and the key thing is who won the game. And Auburn won it, and they deserve a lot of credit for it. Here's one of those great runs. We just missed some tackles. Right. We had a lot of opportunities there, just missed tackles up there. Uh, but you got to give Matt Fullwood some credit, too. Uh, he's one of the reasons that you missed some tackles, because he's a great runner. 
He doesn't give you a lot to shoot no. at. Uh -huh. But he's, he's, he's strong in the hips, and he's got good, uh, good lateral movement. Here's the reverse. There's the end. They do a good job of marching this ball downfield from the time they had the fourth and fourth. And picking that up, which is a big down for them, and moving it down the field and uh, and running the reverse to, to get it in the end zone. Uh, and also they ran most of the, most of the time right, off the clock, right. which was which was uh, which was a big factor uh, against us. We'll be back with final comments in just a moment. Regular season, and we'll prepare to meet Washington in the Sun Bowl in postseason competition. Coach, what is your schedule preparing for Washington? Well, Gus, before going into our schedule, which is going to certainly be a busy one, I'd just like to thank a few people. I'd like to thank you and.